Welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Nice try, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome to tonight's episode. Uh, before we get into it, we have some announcements to do really fast. Uh, first and foremost, uh, getting to our fantastic sponsor for the evening, returning the glorious Loot Crate. Loot Crate! <laughs> Thank no you so much, Loot Crate, for being right. fantastic <laughs> and for uh, for being sponsor for our show for as long as you have. It's been awesome. Uh, hi guys. Oh, hi Sam. Oh, you didn't hi. throw it to me yet, did you? No, but I can. Hey Sam, hey. why don't you tell us about a sponsor? Hey, well, as I tell you guys, <laughs> hey, a crew. By the way, crew. As I tell you guys about Loot Crate, can you guys get a camera up here? I'm gonna show some close-up things. No, they can't. Should have, should have done, need to know done that ahead of time. It's on its way. Okay, Loot Crate. <clears throat> the theme this week <laughs> is primal. Brands include X-Men, Overwatch, Predator. You can go to lootcrate.com slash critical role and use the promo code critical role, one word, for 10% off, and that's some severe savings. Just a few more days left to catch this month's theme, so check it out now. They're a great sponsor, we love them. We love them. Uh, we they love do so that. much for the show, I, we genuinely appreciate them. Okay, that being said, and this will tie into Loot Crate, I promise, I was thinking a lot this week about fan art. Are you on me? Whatever. <laughs> um, uh, fan art. Where There's, did that camera come from? They're fast here. Um, so we have amazing fan artists on the show. We get hundreds of art pieces every week. We're floored by them constantly. Legitimately amazing artists, talented, gifted. And I was like, why, did, why should they get all the fun? So I was like, I'm gonna do my own fan art this week. Oh, no. uh, because oh, no. things, people know about me that I'm a talented performer and all that stuff, but I'm also an emerging visual artist. Great lover. And this is a chance to get my art out to the world. And so I'm gonna present it right now. Guys, this is art, so if you have a, a, any kind of reaction that's real, if you cry, if you clap, whatever, I'll take it. Oh man, jump right. when your time is over. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna start oh no. with Grog. That's not bad. Actually, yeah, it's pretty good. Do, do, wait, did you really let's see these? over here. Mag is that you? Did magic, you do that? Magic marker on, on paper. Oh, That's actually like pretty it. good. It's pretty Man. good. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I feel like I got his rage and his yeah. ferocity. We're okay. supportive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm feeling it. Next up is, she's hard, Keila. Oh, oh, that's what? Nice. Yeah, that's nice. all right. I did kill it. I should point out that all of these are signed and numbered by the artist. I have some <laughs> so. fierce, fierce bone structure yeah, going. Like a, yeah, you're yeah, hard. Oof. A lot of, lot of things going on. Yeah. Antlers. I can see she's cast the fifth level spell, body to forest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I don't know how to draw bodies, Druid. so yeah. I just went with that's like cool. oh, that's grass. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. Druids don't shave pits, man. So truth be told, truth be told, I was drinking. So things <laughs> things get a little worse as we go. Oh. Well, so this is Percy. Wow. It's a it's a yeah. lot of it's a lot of white. Uh, I, I don't know how to paint with white oh. or <laughs> use white. To be fair, so is Percy. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's, white guy with a, white he's hair. Very, he's pasty. Yeah, I don't know. Pasty, so. I kind of I, I, I this maybe I gotta work on this one. Um, okay. Next up, a guy who's near and near and dear to me. Here's Terry and Darrington. A uh, little art tip here, guys. Can you see? Anything? Don't nope. use blue pencil it. on blue paper. <laughs> what? All right, because huh. it it tends not to show up. That's a free artist to artist tip for you guys. Wait, wait, you have to turn yeah, turn it that way. this way more, yeah. more, 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 more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there okay. Is, wow. There is a drawing there. Drawing there. Yeah, it's yeah. Some it's bold just decisions. it's blue pencil on blue paper. So <laughs> it's, it's one of the magic eye pictures. You have yeah. to like really focus to see. I see a sailboat. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I was like, the people are gonna want Scanlan, right? So uh, this one they, took they this one took the most. time. Time, I will say this. this wow! Took, took, a, took about an hour, mostly because I had to go to CVS to get uh, uh, more magic markers. So that was about 55 minutes of the time, and then the rest was hardcore art. Um, and I feel like I really captured. See, he's got fluid. He's got poop. Um, okay. I love that you broke rule number one of Pictionary and labeled things. <laughs> well, okay, I'm gonna do the twins next. Oh. So I can probably go a little wider because these will be side by sides, all right? Oh, so you can really get the artistry. Oh, shit. Okay, here they are. <laughs> which one's which? <laughs> some some wow. may argue that I photocopied Vax and put pink ribbons in her hair to be wow. Vax. Some, some could argue that, Did and you they explain? would be correct. <laughs> No, let it go. Let so, it go but you can also tell them no, apart because he's got a knife and she's got a little bow and arrow. His eyebrows green? 
I ran out of a lot of things, okay. and I was drinking pretty heavily at this point. Yeah. Uh, so I was probably I was probably fully drunk at this point. Wow. And funny. then, last but not least, I mean, this all all together, I'd say probably probably like an hour and a half it took me to do all these. That's so, good. Yeah. That's yeah. That's That's including the CVS run. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, oh. I'm most proud of Pike oh, Trickfoot, no. ladies and oh. gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> Now, again, you could say that I printed out her IMDb page and colored it in, and you'd be right, but it is also art, and, and I will stick by that. Now, here's how this all ties into Loot Crate, guys. Okay. <laughs> it tied into the Dark Knight in that particular I'm giving image, yeah. all of this art away tonight. I'm oh. doing a contest, an unsanctioned contest that I'm running myself, so tonight, Tweet me pictures of your Loot Crate stuff, like you in your Loot Crate shirt, or you holding a Loot Crate, or you or just like a, a screen grab of like, I just subscribed to Loot Crate, something like that. Tweet it to me with the hashtag, Brian Foster smells like cabbage. <laughs> and I will, uh, I will like a lottery. I'll just, I'll pick one at random to win all of this art signed by the artist, one of a kind pieces that will certainly go up in value. Maybe, maybe even before I die, they will be worth a lot of money. And these are all going to, to a fabulous art collector out there. Thank you, Loot Crate. Thank you, artists. Man. And what that's it. Thank you. you. Please just that what hashtag, are you? even if you don't have it. Oh my god. Submit. Happy St. Pat's. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the end of the episode, right? Oh my god. Right? You, can, you know what? Take, you can pass them around, share them, show them. Did you do, when did you oh. do these? Last night? I, I mean, I think it was oh, after, wow. after you left my house last are night. Are you serious? <laughs> we watched so it like, like midnight, midnight. Yeah, it was, it was 11, Art. 11 something. Is it my, is it my imagination? That all of the uh, all, all of the half elves kind of have the same weird chin thing going on. Well, I really, which I is was, consistent. If yeah. you're thinking about it, and I'll also say that that I definitely get like a a, a uh, Ashley as like the Joker threatening the city. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Millions will die. Wow. But so why the pink lipstick, man? If that's what girls wear. They wear pink lipstick. That's how girls get pretty. Yep. Girls that's wear a pink a, lipstick. Although I appreciate her guns and her biceps. <laughs> she's a monster. She is. A she's monster. like she's like the Joker had a had a daughter right. with front doors. Thank you, Sam. Sure. 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 Thank you, Luke Cray. That was therapy. What's, what's that hashtag again? This uh, happened. Hashtag Brian Foster smells like cabbage. Thank okay, you. there we go. Remember that, guys. All right. Um, merch update. Same old, same old. I'm pretty sure. Merch update. There's merch still in the yeah. store. Cool, you got your stickers, mugs, patches, bracelets, stuff like All that. All that stuff. Um, logo shirts and the disturbingly comfortable. How do you want to do this hoodie? It's not there. This is true. Um, this is WonderCon! Is WonderCon! Uh, so we're going to be at WonderCon doing a live Talks Machina panel on Saturday, April 1st, <gasps> from 2 to 3 p.m. Hey. Pacific. From 2 to 3 p.m. at the arena at the Anaheim Convention Center, the big room. So. Fill it, critters. Come on in. We have plenty of room and space for you guys. We want to try and show the convention that we are legion. Not an April Fool's joke. No, this is no. legit. We're this actually going legit. to be there. We will be there. Um, it is an April Fool's joke. No, it's not. They gave, they gave us the bigger <laughs> moment. You can't fill this. And we're like, yeah, we can. So, so we're trying to prove them <laughs> that we can fill the room. <laughs> so come on, come come and join us. Just Two, three p.m. Bring four thousand of your closest friends. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Wednesday Club, Talison. Yes, I missed this week because I. Um, Realized once again that I'm actually supposed to be doing things other than being uh, on the, playing D and D and actually working in the real world. So I missed this Wednesday club, but I'll be back next week. I don't actually know what the the subject is yet because I've done nothing other than this. Fantastic week. Four. Uh, probably, actually, probably not because we were, we had we did Marvel last week. So Logan. maybe no Marvel this week. We got to like like DC and Image and independent books may give a thing. It might be break out, man. Exo Man of War. You are a nerd, dude. Whoa. All Rob Blackhawk. Are you coming on? I already did that. Oh, like, just Man of War, the band. Actually, I was gonna say, will you come on our Exo Man of War show if we do one? I don't know, man. I like football. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Uh, so yeah, there will be a Wednesday club. Uh, check out Twitter for updates, but it will be I'll be back and will be fun and I will be catching up on all my books. Boom. Yay. Awesome. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, debuting on I believe it's Sunday, this Sunday, March 19th. Uh, on Alpha we have Roundtable, which is essentially a series with a, where a bunch of various storytellers get together and talk about different themes about storytelling over drinks. Um, it's actually pretty badass, and I'm really excited. This first season is Game Masters, and we have a number of awesome collection of talented people from all over uh, the web sphere so cool. of running games. We went international, man. Heck yeah. Uh, this first episode premieres Sunday. That's a conversation between me, Mark Humes of High Rollers, and Adam Koble 
of uh, role play. So if you want to check it out, it's on projectalpha.com. Uh, Project Alpha. Project Alpha. Um, no, it actually was it's a really awesome conversation. I'm pretty happy about it. We got a little tipsy. Um, gem Tips, episode one up today. It is my final run on Gem Tips, but the series continues as I pass it off to uh, a new host. If you haven't checked it out yet, our fantastic Satine Phoenix is picking up the torch to give her perspective as a game master yeah. for this next bit. She's awesome. Um, this episode is particularly specifically about uh, how to avoid or deal with GM burnout, uh, which is a task, a topic that I think a lot of people are very familiar with. You don't um, that, do you? Huh? Not yet. <laughs> they make pharmaceuticals for that. No. <laughs> Hopefully. No, uh, no, but honestly, it's got some good tips for anyone out there who's feeling like they're starting to run a little ragged or a little sluggish. Um, check it out. Hope you like it. But uh, Signal Boost episode. Ironically, also featuring Satine, with Satine, which we timed out pretty well. <laughs> I think intentionally. Maybe. <laughs> Probably say, not. Say I'm not sure. Nothing that works out totally well is intentionally in our sphere. So, if you don't know who Satine is, get introduced to her with this week's episode of Signal Boost, and then she'll lead you in graciously into I think it's the, it's the gothiest one since me, I think. Well, no, Jay, I mean, Jason Charles was pretty gothy. She's awesome. I have gothy. kind of a girl crush on Satine. No, I feel it. She's so cool. She's so cool. Yeah. You should go watch her. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Matthew Mercer. You're welcome. Passing some trick stats. New trick stats. Yep. He's got guns attached now. Yep. Uh, this, no. What? No. Yep, so, no. Gallon gun. Gallon gun. No. Gun. No. Yep. no. That's misfire and score twenty. It's gonna be really bad. It's gonna go. Yeah. And they all attack trinket. It's bad. You don't want to use it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right back into him. Um. Yes, and last but not least, Talk Machina live on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. here on Twitch and Alpha. Uh, Brian always. Foster is host every week. We talk about random shit about this, have guests from the community on. Check it out, it's a good time. And apparently he smells like cabbage. Smells apparently, like cabbage. Hashtag. hashtag. Getting a lot hashtag. of great tweets already. Wow, wow. I was only fast. Just about to check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that's the last of my announcements there. Um, Are we doing the other thing? Oh, that's right. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, we had the Critical Role fan club on Facebook actually had a limerick contest to what? to uh, to to announce their 10,000 uh, person members. joining it, turned those members to the group, and we had a winner. A winner is uh, Tamiko El Fujio, who uh, Sam, do you have a copy of the limerick? I have a copy of the limerick in my inbox. Right I think here. you should read it off. I'm gonna read this limerick. It, uh, they had they had their own internal contest, and uh, this was the winner, and it's really awesome. <clears throat> Vox Machina is a fine troop who knock baddies and grannies for a loop. Unless they encounter a door, then their plans are no more. So instead, they'll just scry with their poop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Congratulations, Tomiko, yeah. that's awesome. We had a dog. Good legacy, good legacy. Yes, and everyone else leveled. Everyone leveled. Um, yes. Everyone's at 17, except for Terry, who's at 14. Congratulations. You fucking dangleberry. I remember 14. <laughs> <laughs> that was rough. Ninth level spurls. That Scanlan yeah. could have gotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and bring it in to tonight's episode of Critical Role. Oh.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'll remember that. Cool. We, uh, Tarion apparently exploded. Yeah, that happened. Um, <laughs> oh, there he is. Good job. <laughs> it's like you rushed here from work. Sorry. That's okay. So, bringing us into tonight's episode. Vox Machina, having completed the toppling and destruction of the Chroma Conclave, have now gone towards tying up the loose ends at the end of this massive journey that involved coming to the final stage of Keyleth's Aramente to prove to her people of the Ashari that she is the proper next leader of the Zephra Air Ashari. You traveled far west across the Osmit Sea after renting passage across a ship helmed by Captain Adela and made your way to the uh, island city of Vesra, where you encountered Uvenda, Heart of the Tides, the leader of the Water Ashari, and put upon your final trial, you were set into the, uh, the sub-ocean area of Torrent, where you were to retrieve uh, lodestones in the constant threat of a kraken in the vicinity. Unfortunately, the kraken was triggered upon your attempt. A massive battle took place, one that claimed the life of Vaxeldan, and barely escaped with a success under your belt. You managed to bring his body back to the central temple at the top of Vesra, and through uh, bringing Pike's essence by a blessing through Saren Ray, complete a resurrection ritual that succeeded. Um, Vax returns on his ever dwindling borrowed time from the Raven Queen, it seems, thrusting himself into danger, um, but returned nonetheless. Um, after this, you guys got some pictures drawn <laughs> by Dodie uh, as Pike intimidated him into learning your names in a wonderful method. Um, you got passage on the ship back to Iman, where you have made your way back to Grayskull Keep, and that was where we left off as you planned for the next leg of your venture. So, picking up from there, as an evening rest comes to you all, a night of sleep, Vax. You have an, a difficult evening tossing and turning in bed, the general ramifications of recent events uh, surrounding you. Which, as a note, as a person who's back from resurrection, you are at a relative penalty for the next few days. <coughs> I don't know if you were aware of that. Were you aware of that? You know. yeah. 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 I kind of remember people going for that. Yeah, so uh, you have a night's rest after this. So that's, well, actually, no, you traveled on boat for a few days. That would have gone away. <laughs> hey. That's right, because you'd make it a whole journey back to Yaman. So you've rested up heavily in the book. Forget I said anything. <laughs> but, tossing and turning as the night eventually takes you into subconsciousness, you're plagued with flashes of deep sea darkness, lashing tendrils, the ever gaping maw beaked, swallowing you the light fading, and there once again you see, emerging from the darkness, the same expressionless, solid porcelain mask of the Raven Queen. The voice omnipresent, but gentle, strangely warming against the cold of nothing. And the voice just calls out, I've given you back, my champion, but you are still mine. You have a purpose. Do not forget. You know well that my heart lies with them. Both of them. Uh, all of them. But I have put my faith in you. And I await your word. And wait you shall. I sense something on the horizon. I sense rousing villainy. I sense twisting the threats of life, 
but it's too far beyond my vision. Only time will tell. But I've watched your thread, and it leads to something bright, it leads to something great. But your thread is still clouded at that point. I cannot see beyond. And as that thread moves, it gathers many around it, those you've come to love. Perhaps their fate is tied with yours. Is that a responsibility you can bear, Vaxelan? Then, be patient. Enjoy the time you have. For when this rousing evil gathers, I will need your full attention, my champion. The mask recedes back into the darkness. The cold overtakes you, and suddenly you find yourself shooting up in bed, gasping for breath, the sweat pours down your face, just as the gentle bit of light begins to break over the sun coming through the window in the bedroom. Keyleth, you are kind of roused out of your slumber as well, hearing him gasp and breathe heavily, kind of leaning off the side of the bed. Lightning bugs in the room kind of make them dance. It's nice and calming to try and get back to sleep. Okay. You guys an extra hour. <laughs> <laughs> you guys curl up and get back to sleep, and as you do, and the darkness takes you once more, you just hear the faint echoing whisper in the back of your head as you fall back into your dream state. It just says, My fate touch. Now the rest of you wake up the next morning. It's been a while since you've been back in Grayskull Keep, and it is strangely heartening to be back at home without another constant threat of death, without the looming of dragon destruction, and it brings back a flood of memories of when you first had this keep made, and kind of the innocence of those days, and the things you've learned since, and the new appreciations you've gained through the struggles that you've had in the process. The other thing catches you is the smell of fresh breakfast being made downstairs, as Lena apparently is already on task. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. I run downstairs. Yep, double Asian. I missed that. As I wake up before we head downstairs, I just kind of grab bags and should you get back to sleep? You all right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You ready for the day? Um, never? Always. Yeah, no, sure, let's go. You're a born leader, come on. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you guys come down for breakfast. Uh, Lena is currently rushing around, seemingly excited at the prospect of being back in her kitchen, um, which has been outfitted partially. Uh, when she returned, uh, as you know, most everything was stolen from the keep. It looks like she's made a few trips into town uh, and has purchased enough to make it functional. Um, a little, she comes out, she starts making meals, and she has large pound of plates, goes, oh, I'm uh, really quite sorry, but I'm, we're, we don't have enough plates for everyone, oh. so if you can, don't mind sharing for now, I'm gonna go ahead oh, and do some we'll purchases just Start soon. grabbing bacon from the big piles. Yeah, yeah. same, <laughs> just communal style. Good, That's well, I hope it's okay. It's perfect. Oh, good, plates. Lena. And dusts off her apron. I'll <laughs> take one as well. 
I'll just reach in front of the boys and grab a big <laughs> fistful. Yeah. Just, uh, half elves are just. <laughs> As you guys are eating, um, you hear Eggs. heavy footfalls. Oh. <laughs> you hear some heavy footfalls coming from around the corner. Thanks. Um, can um, you. The first thing you notice is a familiar female face. Once short red hair, it's now grown quite long, um, or at least grown longer to where it's about ear, chin length. Um, you see Shane Tranter, one of the guards that you originally hired and had moved over to Whitestone to guard. Um, walk in, leather armor on, big pack over her shoulder. Looks like she's also returned. As she comes in, she kind of throws a pack Dwarf, down. Right? Uh, human. Oh. Human female. <laughs> Wrong note. Shay Trenter. Human. Shay Trenter, yeah. Okay. And as she kind of walks and throws her pack down, she's like, ah, good morning. Glad to see you're all mostly alive. Did Close you eat up. already? No, is there Too food? Bad. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Help Shame. yourself. God, please, there is food. But no plates. <laughs> but no plates. <laughs> we'll make a run are? into town. Oh, hi there. Just here for <clears throat> a visit, Terry and Darrington. You haven't heard of me yet, but you will. Do you work here? Are you one of our employees? Uh, I'm one of their employees, yes. Oh, well, they made me an official member now, so. Great, so you'll be the one that pays me then. Oh. Uh, we will all uh, uh, chip in for whatever your monthly wages will be. Well, unless I'm mistaken, and well, unless you've canceled our contract. Um, mind you, we haven't been guarding the keep for a long time, so I'm not going to charge you for the time over that, and we appreciate Appreciated. you on that. But we are kind of back on the clock, and this is kind of my only job at the moment, so. Start guarding. All right. And she kind of smiles and sits down and grabs like a little bit of food and pulls it off into her hand and just starts eating out of her uh, leather gauntleted glove and just like. Terry, and you don't have to worry about paying on this. How much do they cost? A fortune. I'm sure I have it written down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we had books. There were yeah, books. We kept. There were books. books. There was also there are a dragon membership attack. Dues, though. I fully expect Quarterly. to be treated as as a as a full paying member of this, yes, and I will good. gladly contribute one seventh of the salary. Uh, really, not necessary. Really, it's, it's quite all right. I insist. Uh, it's it's literally nothing to me. So, <laughs> someone should teach him the box mocking a fight song. Then you should do it, Grog. Oh, yeah, Grog, you have the best yeah, voice of all best. of us. Yeah, do you know the fight song? No, no, I've, I've not learned any fight song. Most of the songs that I've learned are uh, e either uh, religious in nature or uh, I've read them in books and I've made up my own melodies to them. They were uh, epic poems of yesteryear and I sort of set them to a little melody, mostly happy birthday. You made up songs then? Well, I... No, that's good. Each one of these songs is like personal to the member, right? So you make up a song about what Vox Machina means to you. I, I do that? Yeah. Wow. We'll need it by sundown tomorrow. <laughs> Dodie, we have some work to do. <laughs> Working breakfast. <clears throat> so he just sits down right next to you. <laughs> machina, machina. Sockina. Put a sockina. Nope. Uh, <laughs> vox, vox. Put it in the box. Hmm. We'll work on this. <laughs> 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 I'm scouring my notes for where I wrote their salaries down. That was a long time ago. It was, but I've got my spiral here. I just... uh, they're a hundred gold a month back for wow. the first five, uh, for five of them, and then fifty gold a month Who for the other two. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's that's Vex's memory. That's my memory. A hundred gold a month for each of the guards, and then for what was the other? Five actual? of them get a hundred gold a month, and then two of them get fifty gold a month. I don't remember why or who, but that's how it was. I think the guards get a hundred, and the yeah, cooks and get the fifty or something. Get 50. Servants get fifty. Yeah. There it is. Because um, I wrote down, I, I believe Shay, Cordell, Jarrett, Kendrick, and Natiba get a hundred a month, and then the servants, and then we always Elena and Aaron. And he was captain. Yeah, yeah no. and because yeah. he was hot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Although, Hot although well, Jared is technically not on your payroll anymore. No. Yeah. Jared's now a member of the Pale Garden Whitestone. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's right. 
So reducing our costs, we're getting better at this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do you know where the rest of the rest of the crew is? Uh, well, Kendrick is currently watching up on the wall. Uh, Tibe, I haven't seen since you sent him off to Wild Mountain. Right. Well, and she kind of kind of gets a distant stare for a second and says, and, uh, "Well, Cordell didn't hmm? make it through the." Ordeal. Really? And you can see her like kind of. She has that look of, of somebody who lost a close friend. She gets kind of a distant stare for a second, clenches her jaw, and then just shakes her head and goes back to kind of eating absent mindedly. We should have some sort of service then, or at least a dinner. In That's Cordell's up to you. Honor. I've already had mine. My piece has been said. Well, we're glad to have you back. Me too. Glad so many of us survived. Not do, uh, do any of us remember why Tibe went to Wild Mountain? I don't know. You sent him a long time ago to look for information about the Briarwoods. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we made him a snack. <laughs> we did. He turned into a hot pocket, y'all. That is a did we, did we? Did we? Did we fight his undead body in oh, the crypt? God. Did that? No. What was it that you said? You have not. Like, you have not you have not crossed his path. A while ago, oh, you Vox Machina never returning your calls. Wow. Vox Machina not returning, returning your calls, calls since 1992. 1992. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. sp spies by back. nature live a very dangerous lifestyle that they uh -huh. accept. Yeah. Who knows what his whereabouts are if he'll ever show up again, but Maybe you he haven't just heard took from him. Oh, no. It's also very it's possible. True. Doubt it, though. I would feel better about that, I but probably so not. I can try and scry. You just have to live with that question. I just like you the can. notion that maybe we would just, if we had checked one more of those cells in the dungeon of, of White Do you want me to try and scry on the TV? Oh. You know. I can. You know, I, you know, I'll say just because I'm, I'm kind of curious where That's this particular rabbit hole leads. Really? Maybe. Let's just, it's not like we're actually we're gonna go where every Yeah, yeah, describe while we're eating breakfast. All right. Maybe we can put find put out. Put it on the yeah. yeah. like that this is our breakfast entertainment. This, yeah. is, our, this <laughs> is our version of looking at our phones, which is just, this is what's going on. I don't know, it's not really easy. Has he posted anything on Facebook yet? Have you figured out how to project this on a 55 inch, flat wall monitor pressure? That's a good question. Yes, but the, the frame rate is only like it's only 120. Yeah, it's a little, it's, and it's in black and white. He posted on Instagram six weeks DLP. ago, and that it's was it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you you doing scry on in Yeah. What do you scrying? I see, Kidding. So as you guys are having breakfast, you take a moment. You finish the small ritual on the center of the cold stone floor of your uh, kind of mess hall area. The keep. Um, as you focus on your kind of fuzzy, but decent enough memory of Natibe, um, as the ritual completes, your oh no. your pers your vision focuses out for a second and returns to you. And what, what There's no blank? focus, there's no <gasps> Natibe. Oh, oh no! He a jolly rancher in the belly of Craven Head. Oh. I'm afraid. What? I'm afraid the insane things that Krog just said oh. is correct. <laughs> he is a. I'm a powerful magician. A, yes, a, wait, a happy is no ranch longer. hand. Oh. In the <laughs> yeah, he's on the farm. He's, the farm. <laughs> he's running through the fields on the farm. Happy happy as can be. All say. the room to run he wants. <laughs> This is actually being terrible. This is, this is really sad in the weirdest way. I mean, yes, this is very this is, dark. That's dark terrible. Time. <laughs> I know I can't. We're laughing at ourselves. We haven't thought of this guy in <laughs> no. 72 pre years. Pre-stream. It's been like since pre-stream yeah. that this has come up. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, well. Well. Zero focus. Well, there's, an, there's another NPC <laughs> that has just suffered. There's no creature to receive the scrying spell. Boy, my okay. does not taste Which means as he's good either anymore. on another plane of existence. Yeah, he could be on or another plane. Dead. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 is that this version of the, the so he's in the you know Feywild, what? everything's fine <laughs> right. now. He sent him to the, the know, great spy whatever, farm upstate. Whatever timeline you believe in. Okay. At least we've avenged him, in a way. Did he, uh, sure. did he have a family? What was his mother's name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we might want to send her a gift or some sort of a tribute in coin. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. 
Yeah, I'll get right on that. All right. Yeah. It's got to be public record, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, uh-huh. well, we're down a few servants. We should probably get some more guards. Nah, it's hey, Shay, do you have uh, do you have anyone you'd recommend? You want to spend more money? Uh, yeah. Honestly, me and Cordell kind of worked as a team for a long time. We didn't really make friends. I can go looking in the city for you. No. That's all right. Keep your eyes open, but we trust I mean, your judgment. I mean, unless you want to go look for it yourself, I don't mind going and finding some good candidates. Find a few more. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the city is pretty overwhelmed at the moment, though. Yeah. Uh, up to you. I a lot of you... keeps have been ruined, and guards might be looking for work, actually. Mm. Yeah. Like people point. looking for work right now, and a few new people. you look like you've got more important things to focus on, so if you want to hire some, some guards and you have trust in me, throw me some cash and I could probably bring some people in. Yeah. How do you feel about your workload? Do you feel like you can handle this? <laughs> I can handle it. And she like shakes the bit together. of scrambled eggs from her gauntlet in hand. Good leading, how's your, how's your, how's your, good leading, Caitlin. How's your good keep leading. bandwidth right now? Are you? Are you, <laughs> you your plate down full? So, download some of your. <laughs> can I just? Your work this is shitty. But can I just roll for insight and make sure that she's like trustworthy? I feel like she's trustworthy, but we need to know what it is that you do. <laughs> I rolled poorly you for my Marcia. insight. For but you roll. I'll, I'll just check. Peeks through. You roll poorly with the bonuses. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, she seems pretty straight. Huh. You know, she's straight with you. She's not. We've, we've, not trying we've to got a little we've got a bit all. of a trip to take, and so perhaps when we get back, we can audition some new some new candidates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun. Yeah. You'll enjoy that. I mean, we'll either be gone for I'd a few days. Yes, I would enjoy any, any, anything. Oh, it's 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 quite fun. It's it's quite nice. I love I love me some fun. Are you going to audition like these new gods, like we did you? Oh, I can figure something out. Don't worry. I like it. Make sure they're trustworthy if we're not going to be around. And oh. I hand her 500 gold for herself and her Kendrick. Yes. And the three that you hire. All right. I'll get on it then. I think, uh, I think I should have some time to go into town and do this here in the afternoon. She grabs another roll off the table, kind of takes a bite of it. Oh, glad to have you back. She turns around and leaves the room. <laughs> I like her. She's cool. Yep, doesn't say too much. Now I remember why we hired her in the first place. Yeah. Because she fought well. She fought a giant fucking scorpion in the courtyard. What are we doing today? It's, uh, well, um, we talked about going to the Cobalt Reserve to drop off this. To drop off the evil book and do the a little research on the nine fucking yeah. hells. Yes. And then, um,. We could. We need to do a bit of shopping, but then, well, we we do have. You're not quite done, are you? I mean, there's that. I'm putting it out there. Yeah, you up for it? What? She's got to get crowned. Mm. <laughs> wow! I watched that work its way from your <laughs> ear all the way you to your brain. You got a crowned? Really? It got lost on the way. Even larger antlers. Wow. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I um. Does it sit on your head or on the antlers? <laughs> they decorate it like a <laughs> like a winter's <laughs> festival. Like a winter's festival. They put antlers on the antlers. You do. Mm-hmm. You do actually know, though. You've never seen anyone wear it because in the time that you've been learning. There hasn't been a formal uh, yeah, uh, voice of the tempest. Yeah, um, it's not a it's not a crown. It's, it is more of a mantle. You wear like, sure. It's, it's a like ceremonial that. mantle. Like you just like hold it like it's a giant mantle. No, it, well, not like a fireplace like, mantle. Not a mantle piece. It's not like although I could technically transform into a fireplace now. What? <laughs> Because <gasps> you can turn into can doors. Us. She can do it. And you know, I could, I'm pretty sure. Creature? No. Oh, um, <laughs> I could. Like, hang on, hang on. Mimic. A, mimic. A, mimic. a mimic. a mimic. Couldn't I turn into a mimic that it, could be a door? Or uh, a mantle? Well, you haven't seen a door mimic before. Because I don't hate the, you that much yet. We haven't seen a basic mimic before. <laughs> yeah, here we are. In this game, we have? Yeah, you have yeah, seen yeah. a mimic, yeah. yeah. I don't early, early. Early. That was second early, session. Early, yeah. Oh, shit. She's yeah, snapped. that was yeah, a, 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 a mimic and one. a gelatinous cube in the same <gasps> combat. Yeah! I was like, "Hey guys, welcome to D and D." That's right. Yeah. It was oh, fun. Man. No, you weren't that okay. one, unfortunately. So wait, that was that was before be... you came back to the campaign. Can I be a door? 
I mean, at a, I think at a it's a, I think it's a no. <laughs> if there's not an immediate we'll yes behind that, go look, go look. I'll, I'll look at shape change. Uh, we'll think about it. Um, anyway, I'm pretty sure it's just creature. It's not going to come up today. It's not going to. It's fine. Okay, what are we fucking doing? What are we doing? Different creature. If you encounter a door shaped creature in the future, you can totally do that. Well. I'm, I'm, yeah, please, because I, I feel like I'm sure you're having all sorts of reservations and, and thoughts and processes about this notion, but I will admit I have yet to, uh, to introduce your sister to the best part of being titled, which is dressing up. And it would be a coronation. And we could get some clothes. <gasps> we could wear something lovely. Well, do we all? Does that jive with your hometown, though, Kiki? Dressing up, the out of town. Yeah, yeah. It's a sign of respect. Okay. I mean, do all people with titles have, have to dress up? Dress, yeah. Yes. Are you sure? But is it cravats and velvet? Oh, Grand Puba, uh, we're, we're very I'm afraid you have to wear something yeah. quite formal. Well, I've, you know what? Something I, fitting breakfast your is station. disagreeing with me. I think I have to go back to bed. He- he- heavy is the head that wears yeah, the crown. Yeah, uh, I don't feel well. I gotta go. I'll go back up to my room. As <laughs> oh, <laughs> Grog storms off. Man. I really Does thought we were gonna get him to bathe this time. Does he have an aversion to wearing pants? Yeah, I'm sure we shirts. can work out something without mm. pants. <laughs> 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 he wears just something. a belt, a really <laughs> glorious really belt, nice. yeah. just over the dwarven belt, all blinged out. It, he barely—it's like a kilt that's barely joined at the bottom <laughs> already. So it's like a poopy diaper. To be honest. <laughs> just get him boots that go all the way up to the neck. <laughs> we have so much. I mean, it's it's literally, um, it's a poopy, diaper. poopy diaper of dwarven kind. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Activate number one and number battle kill. <laughs> Seriously oh, though. God. Oh. Seriously though, what are we doing? Well, we're, we're doing in again. town. We've got well. this book and the library, but what we should decide what we're going to do tomorrow. I mean, uh-huh. what's to wait? Why don't we go home? It's just, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. It's just weird. With it, it's like. It's been so long, and it, it's exactly. like a lot of buildup, and then t- it's going to be over? You are adorable it's right gonna now. It's going to be, <laughs> what, well, <I'm> serious? <laughs> yeah. It's been like a. Maybe your like dad will have information on the Nine Hells. That's, he could, yeah, yeah. It's just my whole life has been building up to this, and like, I, you know, if we complete it, that makes it real. Wait, I do have a question, actually. If you complete it, do they want you to stay? If I complete it, then I am the voice of the Tempest, and I imagine I can do whatever I want, right? right? Or you stay and lead your people. Yeah, does the Tempest go on road trips, or? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Ooh. Oh. Has your life been leading up to this moment, or has your whoa, life whoa. been <laughs> leading up to the, everything that happens after this moment? I am not entirely sure of the difference of what you just said. I'm just saying that as somebody who spent several years of their life avoiding the one thing that would make them even remotely happy, uh, maybe just barreling through it is the way to go. We'll be there. I guess guess it is that notion of, of leading up to this one moment that you've thought of for a while, and then once you complete that, what happens next? It's just like getting married, Keyleth. Is oh yeah, it's yeah. all the planning that just you know freaks you out. That's all. And then yeah, or uh, sure. What do you know about that? I was going to say, is that theoretical or experiential? <clears throat> theoretical. Obviously. Okay, just checking. It's like, mm. She does read a lot. I wish she used to. <laughs> she still reads a lot. I do. <laughs> you sharing your library? <laughs> Lots of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't need to hear about it. No, you don't. <laughs> That's why I was so excited that you pride. Mm. Uh, um, it's whatever you guys think is best. We can we can go to um, Western first, or we can go to Zephyr first. It's whatever you want. Oh, that's a big decision for you to make, I think. Oh, no, it's the difference of like a day or two, right? You hear the heavy footfalls upstairs of Grog's feet, <laughs> and a door slamming shut. <laughs> Oh. Do time. we need an extra day to convince Grog to wear pants? That could be the deciding factor. Maybe we should put it on him, right? Keyleth. What? Make a decision. 
Leader. That's... You're going to be a leader. Just make a choice. Everybody else believes in you, why shouldn't you? Pencil or pen. <laughs> I'm looking forward to buying a dress either way. Let's check in at Western, drop off the book. And we'll head from feel. Western to Zephra. Good plan. Cool. All right. You're going to be very good at this. Very cool. Man, decision right. making is hard. I know. So many so choices. Wait, would the shops here be better to buy a dress than the shops in Western? Good wow. question. <laughs> Who's importing more? Where's Fashion Week happening? They're both kind of handicapped, though. Is there a Lord Neiman well, Marcus? I mean. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> they've both been under some recent duress, yeah. so it really could go either way. Iman is definitely more of the cultural hub, especially since it's such a huge port town. You get a lot more cultural influence from other continents and heavier trade. So Iman would probably have better outfits, um, but Western, which you know, Grog, you grew up in, um, and you guys have spent some time in, you know, does have its own textiles district. That you know, there are weddings that happen there. They have other events where they sell fine. What's Western like? Like Pittsburgh? <laughs> kind of, I guess you'd yeah. say, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it's like Wisconsin. That's vague. Yeah. Okay, that's less disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. Iman's the New York. Yeah. Western's the Pittsburgh. <sighs> White White Stone's the boulder. Oh, well, that means. <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. It's kind of Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's nothing yeah. happening. Boulder, baby. Well, <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, Thank you. If we're it's gonna... the Pittsburgh, then we should go now, because everything closes at like five. <laughs> <laughs> we could also tree stride to what? To Vasselheim for the, the fanciest of shopping. Probably, oh, this is true. If you want to go all out. They will even have, in theory, they'll have all of our credit, they'll have your. Uh, your crest on file, that's one of those things that would any dressmaker would actually know how to assemble something appropriate oh for any house of any nobility that you clean exists. Up well. You know what, Vasselheim will actually know a little bit about Orcus and I bet the Nine Hells as well, mm. being the god hub. Ooh, okay, vacation. well, I mean, we did mention if we wanted to drop off the book at Western Maybe or Vasselheim. Is the best place to go. We should go to Vasselheim. Do we want to do that and stay? Been. Let's fucking go. Right, let's go to Vasselheim. I've never been, that sounds that's perfect. great. Right. How far north have you been, Terry? Quite far north. You're from. Right? I'm from the north. You're from Wild Mount. You're correct? from Wild Mount, which yes. is. You said uh, the fourth wall. It's well, <laughs> as far as you know, from where you grew up. Yes. Um, Tal Dore is to the west, like southwest of where you grew up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Isira, which is where Vasselheim is, and you know, Althansia, is far to the east. First, there was the dinosaur. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So but I lived in the north of that place. Oh, you lived in the you lived in the north of Wildmount, which is yes. it's it's pretty, like, Siberian if you oh. consider like yeah. I want to go to there. Yes, so. I, I thrive in cold, cold places. Is this such a place? Um, it is, it is quite chilly. Yeah. yeah, not right. as cold as my my home. Mm -hmm. Blue. Yeah. I have some excellent cold weather robes in my bag of holding that I would love to flaunt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I think it's. I think it's. We also need. <laughs> probably need a few Let's healing go. potions and such, and we'll probably have better luck somewhere else. So. Yeah. Yes. Anything we else plan. we need to do before we leave? They'll on? have potions and things there. I probably need to stock up a bit. Yes. That they'll, they'll have these things at yeah, Castle High. Yeah, All yeah. right. Great. Uh, you don't just have some health potions in your armor. You can't just like plink one out of your nutsack or something. Uh, I'm gonna reach onto my uh, onto my robe and pull out uh, a patch that produces four uh, healing potions. What? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> are they regular? Or are they great? They're regular. Oh. All right. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, all right. Man, right. we should tear you apart limb from limb Please and just don't. see what fucking shakes out. Please don't. Does that like <laughs> regenerate and come back? Is it a one time only? No, but it, I'll just buy another one if I if I uh, run out. Another so, robe? Yeah. Wow. wow. So I had a four pack of medieval five hour energy drink. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Holy it's God. literally monster yeah. energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like four healing, that's like a first level healing potion. Uh, uh, Terry, um, Vasselheim does get a little bit. Um, oh. Magic. Yeah, a, a little bit. They don't like magic. You gotta keep arcane it on the magic. arcane magic. I practice alchemic magic mostly, so I'll be okay, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. I you might want to keep a low profile. They want you to do it in public. 
I mean, alchemical elements, yes, but a lot of your spells, spells, and <laughs> and infusing everything is arcane, arcane based. based yeah. And you have a giant arcane metal man based. following you around. Oh, <laughs> maybe I should disguise Doty in some way. Can you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can throw a cloth over him or make him look like he's just a big dude wearing a robe. Or a ghost. With a hood yeah, over his Or a ghost. Mm-hmm. Is it Halloween? It is. Hello. <laughs> So. Sadly, not Halloween. We can uh, put him in some. We can put him in some armor or some some fake cloth of some. Suit let's just put a robe over him. Could you and I craft something for him before the journey, like a face mask of some sort that makes him look like a I mean, brave I'm, warrior? I'm really good at disguises. The trouble <gasps> is, true. I haven't flexed those muscles in a while. Let him give it a go. The, the trouble is, he's going to emanate. You can make disguises. I can work he's with a little bit of nose energy. putty, and yeah. yeah, I could make a fake I think, face wait, for this guy. Is it an assassin? <laughs> that I would love to see. As best as you understand. It isn't like, oh my god, you there's some sort of magic source in Vasselheim arrest everyone involved. It's not like super illegal. It's just generally frowned upon and called suspicion. No, I, I want to pursue you making a mask for so Doty. Do I. <laughs> I feel really rusty. I want to help him because I'm a, a rogue. Oh, team. let's 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 go full Cinderella on this. Let's get all the mice involved. <laughs> what do we want this guy to look like? Well, I mean, there's no disguising the fact that he's eight feet tall and right. uh, squeaks when he walks. <laughs> <laughs> Should we uh, turn him into a Goliath then? I mean, this guy's brother. You're going to do paint. full body paint? Oh, jeez, this, for this seems really complicated. What if we just put like a, a, a stealth cloak over him or something? A stealth cloak? Do you have a stealth cloak? Yeah, and cloak? then paint his. Yeah, let's, I let's, do. Let's make him do look you. like a Goliath that wears a lot of robes because he was horribly yeah. scarred. I start uh, taking Gl- robes. Uh, how do you feel about this? I feel like you, you have the look upstairs. of a man with an oh, oh, upstairs. You're upstairs, you're not actually here, never mind. He's upset about the notion of pants. I know. I'm just nervous. Making him look upstairs. like he's in a suit of armor <laughs> seems seems like a thing. Irritable bounce under the bed. We could put him in a suit of armor. I mean, yes. He's already metal. <laughs> Because your constitution Fine. is rough. Take all the robes off. <laughs> like, that has to go Do through quite a few want. barriers. Right, well, hmm. <laughs> is, is, is Doty uh, strong enough to wear a suit of armor? Strong. I mean, it decorative. Yes, decorative. Yeah. The Doty is his own suit of armor. Why are you doing this? Why are you this is funny. Because it's amazing. <laughs> okay. He's a giant automaton. I'm, I'm having a weirdly expensive. I want Doty with a fake nose. That's all yeah, I want. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Groucho, Groucho Marx, nose, yeah. and glasses. Yeah. I'm going to need your help because of course. I'm not used to working on robots. Okay. Uh, but maybe top, top, can, yes. you can make some mesh work, right? And if we get some clay. Oh my god. Yeah? Yes. And some spectacles like yours, but maybe shaded. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> He's only got the one pair now. We can make him a mask at the very least. Yeah. All right. I have made masks. Let's make them for myself. This is going to look ridiculous. So exciting. This will, this will, this will be fine. like, that's a robot wearing a mask. <laughs> no, it's just a, he's just a man with, we'll with see. no arms, legs, heads, limbs, or chest. Well, we he's don't have to. I mean, no, we're do doing do? it. No, we're doing it. Let's spend some time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You guys get, everyone else can get their little run around uh, Western done while, while we sit and okay. make a robot. So, Vax. <laughs> Needing yeah. materials to prepare such a, an elaborate. Uh, <laughs> hey, give me some money. I don't have any money. I never have money. You need money to yeah. go buy a stupid mask for a stupid robot. This is the first time in this entire goddamn campaign. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Give me some fucking money. <laughs> I, boy, I can give you money. It's his robot. <laughs> I want her money. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right. like I you know, it's, it is important for him to point. express himself. I've passed out money lately before, Some I think. Arts and crafts can be very therapeutic. I throw myself off of things for this one. She can't give me 50 gold pieces. Fine. Thank you. How about everybody gets a thousand gold? It's a party! Really? All right. Yeah, everybody take a thousand gold. Sure. Yeah. Me one, too? Except for you. Uh-huh. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Do I have this ability? I feel like I remember it, but I'm looking. You don't know. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I'm pretty sure you do. I'm I like, oh, we'll I think I think you have a disguise kit. It's not an ability I can, per se. I, I have imposter. Right? right. You have imposter. That's me. Can I use I it? Gross. Really funny. By the way, uh, Liam, no. if you don't have this ability. I want to see Shit, this anyway. Even more. Still, yeah. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Your way through it. We're no, because because imposter is the ability to mimic somebody else. It has nothing to do. A disguise kit is what you're using. Oh, a disguise and I, kit. And I've always had a disguise kit. Correct. Because okay. I did something back in the 
like back in the home game, I did something. Yeah, right? you, yeah you've something. done a couple things. But that was, uh, that was a whole different role. But it's set. not an ability you have. No. You just, well, you do have an ability, but it's it's only for you. It's not for Dodie. Right. You, 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 so, you, you own a cardboard box with a bunch of stuff. So here's Let's what we do. First and foremost, yes. you have to go to the town and gather supplies right. because your disguise kit is designed for very small prosthetics and things. Right. Like this is a large endeavor. Like so five times that. Yeah. yeah. I need you to roll an investigation check. Shit, yeah. This is your ability to go around the town and Jeez, find Louise. through the midst of chaos of a mon trying to repair itself somebody who can sell you the supplies well, necessary. That is a twenty. I need some. I need some clay. A natural twenty? Really? Yeah. No, not a natural. Not 20. But a twenty? <laughs> yeah. That's still fine. All right, it takes you. I gave him some list of some things. It takes you about three hours round trip to go into the city, locate the location, and purchase relatively inexpensive, comparatively about ten gold pieces for the materials to do this, which is expensive for anyone who's just making. And a lot of it is, um, uh, you know, burlap material that's gone over with a weatherproofing. Uh, liquid that when it solidifies, it gives almost like a rubbery texture. It's used for for carts that are traveling long distance under bad weather, mm -hmm. and you figure that might resemble some sort of a, a skin type texture at mm -hmm. a distance. Um, you uh, gather other elements to build a mask, to you know wrappings and material to just kind of block things that might look metallic. Um, so yeah, so you you gather things that might work in your favor. So as you collect this, what are you guys working on? <laughs> Uh, we're making a mask. Well, we're doing the the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a, a a way of connecting this to to him without limiting his movement. So I'm making so that it's a very accessible, easy harness to get this on and off, and starting to design and put together how we're going to. What I'd like to make is a couple, um, uh, like a porcelain cover for for the hands and face. Oh, like porcelain. So hands. that it actually looks like perhaps it it won't it won't draw immediate suspicion, but if it does, it will look like somebody with an artificial limb. Maybe they've been hurt. Okay. Ten sets of scissors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, so, are you crafting the porcelain? I am. I'm. I'm that is I'm, not. Kiln. That is not. You, you. Yes, but your materials. You're, you're used to I'm using. Not using it's, instead of porcelain, I'm, I'm going for the cer uh, ceramics that I use for some of some of my build. It's more. Sculpey. It's more practical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I've been working on some jewelry shit. I've been genuinely learning how to. This do. is true, I'm, but, but, but the skill set for jewelry oh, is I'm very aware. different for the skill set of porcelain. <laughs> Um, I need you to make a rig like in a video game. I'm gonna go into town and buy some plates for beautiful. Lena. <laughs> okay, hmm? I will say I'm willing to have this. We can just use mud from outside. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a set of potter's tools? Because that would be specifically what would be used for this. If you're gonna be working with with ceramics and porcelain. We. Uh, can I roll to see? Because I, I have a kiln, so I might have it, but I don't know if I have it. You I have a kiln, this, but you have, you have a kiln that's designed. F it's more. It's it's a it's more of a Smelting, m metal used. Forge. It's more of a metal used forge. So it'll destroy. It. It'll destroy ceramics. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's, okay, it burns so a it's, certain it's, heat. Um, this could be the dumbest. I know. This is like my favorite place in time. Let it happen. I'm so excited. I know. I know. Uh, it's maybe, just like maybe, it's, it's if, ascending if, to the record. If prototype one fails, I make it out of pewter. Okay. This, this this is an adjacent skill set. You're not going to get your proficiency bonus to it, but That's you do fine. have materials to essentially try it. I want you to go ahead roll and roll a base yeah. dexterity check. <laughs> roll to Just add your dexterity one. modifier. You are not proficient. Is that, I am, is that I'm deal? trusting on Gil because because he you also say the thing, can't say the incantation. Make a look a high, make a high. Fuck me, Gil. Where are those pottery tools, Gil? And those pottery tools are. It's a good roll. Twenty-two. 22. <laughs> it takes you the better part of the next two hours, but you manage to create some. Two hours. Th th thank you for helping me, Ghost, by the way. Oh, I mean, they, they, they have to cool and harden, but in the process of crafting it and heating it, you do have some decent ceramic plates that you think might work. They're going to be fragile. That's fine. Um, not like, well, they'll crumble on their own walking, but hoping... if any of them take any sort of oh, yeah. chip and damaged ceramic. Hand, hands and face is what I was hoping for. Yeah, well, I'll say the better part of two hours or so to, to, cr to craft them, and then you begin to heat them in the kiln. It'll take you a while for them to, okay. to harden and, and like, set. We're just figuring out the, the, the little easy armature that won't get in his way, and I'm kind of peeking at him, seeing how he works. Right. And... For the armature, roll tink Tinker's kit. Okay. Check. That's proficiency. I'm, I'm proficiency going plus to, uh, oh, sorry. You can you assist. Do. And actually, this would be proficiency plus you do. intellect. Is what it'll be because this uh, is trying to figure it out specifically. As opposed to just help you I, I, I'd be happy for an assist unless you're doing something. Uh, I, I was going upstairs to ask one of the help something. Oh, go ahead. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll just I'll just work on your robot. Sorry. <laughs> Twenty one. Pass it. Okay. Pass yeah. You it, easily enough to figure out a harness. So what are you doing, Terry? Uh, what was the uh, the servant's name who you said used to have short hair and now long? Uh, Shane. I go to her. 
Him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's her. Um, <laughs> and uh, she will punch you so hard. I you offer, should ask her what she. I offer to buy her hair for a hundred gold pieces to use as a wig. How do you say this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, because okay, she's literally, literally outside, like, like, like sitting, sitting on the outside wall, of the gate, leaning forward, just on a stool with a loaded crossbow over her lap, just looking out in the distance. And you're down below, about uh, twenty you there? feet down. Excuse me. Hello. She, look, she looks over the top. Yeah. Hi, uh, Tarion Darrington, a new member of the group. Hi. Hi. Yes, uh, we're working on a very important project. Uh, it's a undercover mission in a foreign land, and we're going to need a, a disguise, specifically a wig, a convincing wig. Uh, we all thought that it might be a good idea to have some real hair for this wig, and, well, you have beautiful hair. I wouldn't mind if you would lend it to the cause. Uh, I'd like to buy your hair for a hundred gold pieces. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a persuasion check. Oh my god, we're short fault when you need them. <laughs> Did he roll well? I'm not saying. Uh, well, persuasion? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be on the. 24. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she goes. You're kidding me, right? Oh, no, no, no. And I reach into my bag and holding and pull out 100 gold and say, I, 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 it would mean a lot to me and. And to my teammates, if you would uh, cooperate in this mission, it might even save a life. <laughs> she gives you this long, <laughs> stern, dark look. <laughs> Make it 500 and you got a deal. 500? All right, fine. <laughs> and a bargain at that. Uh, it's getting too long anyway. And she makes her way down the ladder and just walks past you into the keep. Yeah, Com comes back yeah. about a half an hour later, head completely shaved smooth. Oh, wow. And she's got in a little little uh, square of fabric, a cluster of all of her red hair. She kind of balls it up, comes over. A pleasure doing business with you. This haircut might very well be the fate of the world. So thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Here's your money. Thank you. Here's your fucking hair. <laughs> Ooh. Goddamn weirdo. And then walks off and heads back to her perch at the top. Buy my book! <laughs> Buy my book! <laughs> okay. You now have. I'm gonna try to make a wig out of it. Okay. I don't really know how. Uh, <laughs> you look like a uh, blue. I, I, I got alchemy, right? I can yeah. make like you, you want to? Nope, no, I'm not helping. <laughs> you can. Never mind. Don't want to help. Can we make some goop? <laughs> some glue to we'll put say, on. We'll yes. say. We'll say using the basis of a tanglefoot bag, um, which what? is a very simple alchemical. Oh, it's got like substance. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you begin to. <laughs> I, mean, I can make a gallon. You already. begin to attempt to apply it to the top of Dodie's head <laughs> and begin to very carefully layer hair across it. I'm going to need, let's see. <laughs> How long does so Goop much. last? Will uh, Dodie just always have hair now? I mean, it's pretty sticky. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and make, just make a dexterity check. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Not good. Oh. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah 17. Yeah, yeah. 17. 100%. <laughs> so, so it, it, it looks a little carrot toppy, but it works. Um, it, it, it's, you know, these, these clusters like kind of poofy red hair, but you, no, you layer it. Dead friend. You layer it in a way that looks as good as you can. Given the fact that you glued hair <laughs> to Dodie's head, it could have gone a lot worse from a distance. This, yeah, it kind of looks like a person. I also gave him a little, little bit of a little bit of goatee. Oh. Yeah, well, just to match me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. You now have. Now, yeah. do, you mean, do you mean the Fu Man, or did you give him the full goatee? Because you just did the Fu Man too. Probably just the Fu Man. Okay. All right, there you go. But there he's going to be covered by a mask. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, shit. You have, you have crafted your own avatar. Um, Is the hair uh, oh, shit. curly or straight? Uh, it, it's a little wavy. Wavy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, her hair had been short before. When it grew long, it came out a little right. wavy. Um, so, yeah, it has, it has a little bit of a. 
it kind of looks like um, oh, what's the actor's name from Mask? <clears throat> Oh, wow. Oh, Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz really? and Mask. Oh. His hair there. It kind of looks like that on Dodie. Critical wow. role, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Eric Stoltz. <laughs> Google it. It's kind of what it looks like. Great I thought you were gonna go it's a great movie. I thought you were going to go with McDonald's, great. McDonald's so that's a step up. Yeah, yeah. see, that was, yeah. That, but that, that, that's kind of the, the, the texture and the, the right. look of the hair from what we've I recall. Set the, we've set the stage. Wow. Max, bring us home. So, with the porcelain cooling off, Vax comes back with the rest of the supplies. <laughs> oh, oh, good gods! What did you make? What did you do? He's not just the president, he's a member too. <laughs> What's fantastic is he's glued the facial hair before the porcelain mask was put on. So, as Percy and Vax come in with their pieces. All right, I've got the. Oh, good god! <laughs> It's not, I mean, it's bad, it's really bad. No, it's, but I mean, like, it's, uh, it's... It's a start, I think the hair okay, will actually help the the, the, the molding clay stay in place. We're gonna put it it'll be fine. And you've got hands. Uh, two. Oh, yes, that too, yes. Oh, excellent. Excellent. All right. We collectively are Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's make this happen. Wow. Okay, <laughs> so you put on the harness, you get the ceramic plates on that can kind of loosely you know, appear to be smoother and you know a little more of a, a general curvature to the joints, so it looks more natural from a distance. Um, you put on the the mask of porcelain that you made. I mean, your the facial hair that's underneath and is on Dodie's face is going to be under the mask. Yes, thank God. Uh, you could attempt to remove it if you'd no, like to try. No, no, help. no. We'll, we'll just leave hold, it. Just hold a little bit. In, 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 in case yeah. we're in combat and it comes out, maybe we'll get like a momentary yeah. element of surprise as they go, "My Plus, God, what is that?" It's just good to know that at any given point in time, Dodie now has a secret goatee. <laughs> <laughs> I had that extra, only I had extra hair. I wanted to use it. <laughs> Hashtag secret <laughs> goatee. <laughs> uh, what is this oh episode? Oh <laughs> this is the worst uh, thing. Play, play my home keyboard cat. Go ahead and roll it. Right. Roll oh, this guy's kit. All right, I'm gonna try to make this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what number do I use for the disguise kit? Dexterity? Uh, uh, no, th this would be, hold on. The tools kit here, with you it would be, yeah, because it is it's how number your fingers are. It's dexterity bonus plus the proficiency modifier for disguise kit. If you're proficient with the disguise, with the disguise kit? Oh my god. What are your proficiencies? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, so I'm just going to say no. Then it's just dexterity. dexterity. Just roll d20, add your dex bonus. Okay, all right, I'm going to go for like a, a, a General Krieg type look to the face. I'm going to do my best. Okay. A redheaded General Krieg. Nice. Okay. Redheaded. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna use luck. <laughs> I'm gonna use luck. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you, Are you sure? sure? I'm quite sure. Natural twenty. Oh my oh. God. Oh. <laughs> General Craig is good to see ya. In spite of the absurdity <laughs> of what you've managed to accomplish with the better part of your day, <laughs> as the sun is now setting, <gasps> and the rest of you have been wondering what the fuck is going on down there. You managed to build some semblance of a muscular structure underneath the robes, and amongst the uh, the porcelain mask that Percy had set as a base, you have crafted texture, color. Um, it looks kind of like a face. It looks like Lincoln from Disneyland. <laughs> it does. It looks like it looks like a kind of shitty animatronic, which I means was the 16th president. <laughs> like it really does. Yeah. Like like not not a good Disney animatronic. Like State Fair animatronic. Sure. Yeah. Like Chuck oh, e. like Chuck well, yeah. E. yeah. This has been through a few fires. Yeah, yeah. Fire. yeah it's Bonnie oh, Springs. Oh, it's straight up Bonnie Springs. <laughs> it's but given the circumstances. Not too bad. Boys, guys. I'm, I'm so proud of both of you. Art is subjective, all right? <laughs> oh, on top of this thing and we're golden, I think. I'm Hashtag Brian Foster smells like cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's <laughs> Day, everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite pleased. I'm quite pleased. I, I didn't think that Dodie could be improved, but mm. you all impressed me today. Thank you. Thank you for this. Good, good work, everybody. Good work. Good work, everybody. Good work. Yes. Good teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Yes. Feels good to say it. <laughs> well. <laughs> good work. Good work. <laughs> uh, Shall we go to Vasselheim? Yeah, let's go. Grog? No, come down. 
<laughs> Wrong! What have you been doing up there? Is that General Creed? It's very expensive, don't break it. <laughs> Why have you aligned yourself with this creature? <laughs> I knock Someone. on the side of its head. <laughs> That's not Creed. It's Duty. No. Duty did not have fire crotch hair. He did <laughs> not have a face or hands or a crotch. <laughs> he didn't have any of that I, stuff. Yeah, but girl, we glued it on. We oh, we he's wearing a disguise. Yeah, yes. disguise right. Who did that? Ooh, all, of, all of us. All of us. The team. Mainly the team. these three. Mostly Keyleth. I'm impressed. It, yeah. it occurs to you guys, you don't know where the hair came from. <laughs> What? Mm. <laughs> Druid craft. Whoa. Well, well done. Got all your hair. Mm-hmm. Can you do that to me? Where? Where did you get the hair? Where did the hair from? What is it? I've got some tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> did you pull like a patch off and it turns into a bunch of hair? Maybe. Maybe I did. God, magic. Did you get some glue Amazing. all over my robe that I put on him? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> I did. Make a perception check. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> That'll do all right. Uh, 24. That robe is ruined. Oh no, it's not ruined! <laughs> well, certainly, <laughs> elements of it are permanently glued to Doty. Oh, I think this is your hair dyeing robe now. Sorry. <sighs> that was my stealth robe. Mm, and, and it now will yours. be once more. I'll have it cleaned Wait, and that's pressed glue for you. On the, on that's the, a on stealth the, robe? The elven cloak? Oh. oh. Does that mean that the... It's a magical <laughs> item that you put on. Yes. You put a magical item on That's a robe. That's the only robe I fucking had. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh that for I just nothing. I didn't glue it to him. Much sentimental value. I know. Now there's a robot with sentimental value. <laughs> it's all right. You're still alive. Hope you do. Let's just do the thing. Come You're on. right. Now that it... Now that I kind of like blur my vision, the glue is the most noticeable part. Mo noticeable part <laughs> of the robe. I think it blends into the texture actually quite nice. <laughs> Makes it look like he's seen some shit. Motherfucker, let's go to Vasenheim. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. This guy's job. I'm gonna so, buy you a new robe. I, it has a very like when when and like Dory's been standing there. As soon as you guys let's go, and Dory starts moving, it has this very like scary Return to Oz feel to it. Like it's yes. you're just like. Uh, <laughs> I like it. This is everything I've ever wanted. Oh man. Hey, where did you learn contouring? <laughs> because that's learn? really well done. You've seen what I can do with hair, right? I mean, are you really surprised? That's a good point. Let's go. It's the Elvish half. It's the Elvish half. The Elvish half. Class time. Class time. Yeah. All, All right. right. So. You go ahead and head up to the uh, the Temple of Serenray within your keep. There's the central tree there. You go ahead and transport via plants to Vasselheim. Where in Vasselheim do you and want to exit? We have the book. We have the book and the chest. Chest and a book. We have the book. All right. Not um, the chest, but yeah, we the have the book. Building. Yeah. Wrapped in cloth. Where is there? There wasn't there the tree that was near the Slayer's Take. There is one. Yeah. There's one yeah. of the patches there. Okay. We'll so you that. use that one. Let's use that save point. Yeah. That. That. What are they called? Like, okay. Yeah. Waypoints. There, that's yes. Thank you. Wait. So as you guys emerge, uh, it is still like early afternoon in Vasselheim. Like the yeah, the sun was just setting in your location. You guys have traveled far northwest at this point. It's still midday. You emerge uh, roughly in the center of the quad roads, a little bit north center area of the quad roads. Um, what are you looking for? Um, well, we should go library. to... Library. Yes, the library. Library. Uh, we delivered the Horn of Orcus to the Platinum Dragon. Yeah, the Platinum Sanctuary. Yes, yes. Mm. so yeah. we should probably go talk to them as well. Because I imagine they'd have a good hiding place. That's where I put the Ark of the Covenant, certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also to talk to them about Orcus. Correct. Since that's... And then shops for more potions. We want to split up. You want to go? That's actually talk not a August? bad plan. Yeah, sure. Okay, you're gonna go research Orcus. Yeah, sure. The twins. Yeah. All right, Percy, you want to go to the Platinum Reserve? Always. All right, we'll take the book. Terry, you want to come with us or the twins? 
With you, absolutely. All right, Grog? Oh, God, the options both suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Those are oh, twins, Grog, they're more inclined to violence. We're also going to learn about the Nine Hells. No, 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 okay, wait. Books? Yeah. No. What are you doing? Books. <laughs> no. I'm doing my own thing. We're gonna go no, learn about. I, I had things, wanted to go though. buy some potions and things. Is that a, a, an option here? Oh, do you want to be team potions? And buying team, things? Team, you like buying things? Team team shopping, Terry Rock, Actually, Terry. Actually, I'm buying potions. Terry, what? I pull Terry aside. <laughs> yes. What? If you're gonna go shopping with Grog, you need to know. You need to know. Don't look at him. He is terrible with money. Away. Terry, he's terrible with money. I mean, like, he will, he will offer them, <laughs> stop it. He will offer them double what they ask for. Oh, and that's not good. Don't worry, I've been raised around money. I know it's worth, I have I'm at least saying, six trust funds and they're all managed quite well. <laughs> I'm so, so happy for you. So what? Just keep an eye on him, all right? I will receive your trust, and I will fulfill your request as a fellow member of this team. Fabulous. Thank you for entrusting me yes. with this mission. Thank you, Terry. Good luck. Grog, keep an eye on him. Make sure that everything goes. Oh, I will. As they leave, I spank Grog hard in the ass and say, money was meant to be spent. <laughs> <laughs> I like that twin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as the, you scatter into three different directions, um, to first, the library? All right. <laughs> no, you were going to the Platinum Sanctuary. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> we're going to the library. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have the, 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 the same, Holy the place archive. where they, the archive, to the archive. Did you guys both like say goodbye and then you're walking in the same direction? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the, uh, are you um, parked over here too? I'm oh, okay, God. this is awkward cool. now. We'll just keep going. They're right next door. They're Some kind of connected. They're partners. Some people go both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys make your way up to the Platinum Sanctuary. You head to the base of the central mountain that the uh, the north end of Vasselheim is built around to the winding stair that leads up to the sanctuary proper. Uh, there, as you ascend, you can see the sun is just kind of getting to the three, four o'clock in the afternoon position. Um, the color of the sky is starting to turn a bit, a bit different. Uh, you guys make your way to the outside doors of the sanctuary where you see uh, the guards are there stationed as you approach. Um, some of them you know, put up a bit of an aggressive front from a defensive standpoint. One of them does recognize you and approaches, pulls like the front of his uh, helmet up and... You are, you are Vox Machina? We are. Uh, what business do you have here at the Platinum Sanctuary? We have come to discuss um, the Horn of Orcus that we delivered here a while ago. So, you request an audience with uh, Scalebearer of Vault? Mm hmm. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Hi, Bearer of Vault. says, Very well. Um, please do be patient. I believe he is busy. Oh. And he heads uh, inside. The door is closed behind. As he does that, I look yeah. to Max and go, Hey, I have an idea. So, the book we have, right? Hmm? What if instead of leaving it here, we left it at the Raven Queen Sanctuary? Don't you think they would have, they would keep it more safe? Because she hates undead, right? This is like she, her nemesis, right? She does. Um, we, yeah, I mean, that's a whole thing. I don't think that's a bad idea, but uh, I feel like if I go there, I need to stay for a bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want to do that? No, not yet. All right, cool. Let's let's forget I mentioned anything. Let's do that. All right. All right. Just About fifteen minutes or so pass as you guys are kind of look up. It's a gorgeous view from up here, by the way. I mean, the the for for Vasselheim, the cloud cover is probably seventy to eighty percent of the year, with coming storms and sleet. Um, this is one of the few days you've been. Uh, during this part of the season where the sky is open, you actually see some uh, blue in the sky, and as the uh, 
the light of the day begins to grow more towards a dusk color, um, you start seeing kind of the distant change. And it's just endless, thick, dense forest of the, uh, the Vespa Timberland all around the city. And so it is kind of a serene waiting period as well. I just lean against Trinket. Trinket. <laughs> And Trinket, you calm Trinket a bit. Trinket is like heights, and is up, up, <laughs> up here on this platform, it, it's literally like a very small rail, and then it drops probably a good 150, 200 feet down. And so Trinket's just like staying as far away from the edge as possible. Um, eventually the doors <clears throat> shift, and one side opens up slightly. The same guard walks out. All right, very well. Follow me. Turns around, leads you in. He uh, is clearing his large, uh, very well polished tower shield to his side. He still has his helmet visor up. Leads you into the central structure. Do we, do we know what we're going to say? Uh, we're going to talk about the book. Uh, we're going to ask them if they can destroy it. Or hold it, right? Do something with it. Preferably destroy. Okay. It's history, though. It's. It's dangerous. True. You guys are led to the audience chamber, um, surrounded by the wide uh, net of pillars in the central area, but has a hole above the top of the temple where the light comes through, and there you see, stepping in kind of hurriedly from the opposite side, uh, flanked by two advisors, is a uh, high bearer of Ord, uh, the silver touched. Um, you see his elven form, his very fine features, his skin still very pale, almost. Um, Almost pearlescent when the light hits it, um, and his robes kind of just flow behind him, dragging a good four or five feet across the center. It's such an open space between the the circular pillars that hold this. It's just this tiny image of him approaching you amongst this wide open space with his two advisors. As the footsteps get louder and louder, he approaches. So yes, you've summoned me. What is your business? Didn't mean to summon you, Scalebearer. I know your time is precious. Yeah. Um, we, however, came across, in fighting the Chroma Conclave and defeating them, this book um, which references Oparsh's search into necromancy. Necromancy? Necromancy. Necromancy. Josh Necromancy? Necromancy, yes. Does that... Necromé? Necromé. <laughs> Does that name mean anything to you? Yeah. I have read of it, yes. I mean... It's a, it's a creature of lore. Opash was before the divergence, even. If you indeed found a tome that once belonged to him, this is of much interest to us and our network of researchers. Research. Uh, researchers. Yes. It's an evil tome. I can only assume it is. You are right. <clears throat> We came to Vasselheim to dispose of it. My sister has read it, parts of it, and all of it. It's foul. It should not be allowed to exist. We can ensure that it falls into no hands beyond this temple. However, hmm. we do have to research the contents. You understand? the necessity of understanding the evils and darkness that are out there, that when they arise, we can properly counter them. Can I insight check him? Yes, go for it. Ah! Turd burgers. It's not like it's terrible, but it ain't good. 14. 14. He's hard to read in general. His position and station, and 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 his his eyes are so white, like the the, the iris is is almost not visible, um, and his stone face and his explanation. But he's, I mean, he's making sense, you know. If if you have information on ne necromancy, no, on necromancy, <laughs> yes. um, or any devices that darker forces utilize, it better Necro. prepares you if you know what those entail. Right. And if there is any place that could withstand the corruption of such a book, it would be the strongest focus of the Platinum Dragon's divine power that exists on the planet. Well, that's good. So, you get it. You get, you get the sense that Vord is not deceiving you. Okay. 
What happens after you research it? We seal it in the vaults below. Same place we stored the horn. Has that vault ever been disturbed in its entire history? It's been a long time, and we've reinforced it. If I recall, last time you were here, you encountered some of our defense yourselves. Yes. <clears throat> I think you will know by memory that we are well fortified. So. Be warned. The book tried to claim me. If you resisted it, I have no doubt our clerics can as well. He nods his head over to one of his advisors. Um, this, no, this, yeah. <laughs> this, this young man with a very, very tight braid uh, pulled to the back of the head that dangles about mid-back behind silver and white robes approaches and kind of puts his hands out to accept the tome. Oh, I'm sorry, we weren't clear. Um, we came to discuss it, we don't have it now. Puts his hands aside and steps back. Oh, well, return with the tome, should you see fit to leave it here. Can I ask you, how much do you know of Orcus? I know enough. I don't know much of anything, and it's kind of important that we learn. Hmm. So he uh, nods to one of the other advisors who steps off for a moment. Sit a moment. This is a conversation to have. And uh, some of the guards come and bring a few chairs and kind of set them behind you. Borkis, the demon prince of undeath, resides in the depths of Thanatos, one of the varying realms of the abyss. It is here that he snuffs the life from all creatures and brings them under his sway. He is an entity of ever-hungering need for power and to take all life and break it so he can bring it under his control. Thankfully, as one of the betrayer gods, he was sealed away and the Divine Gate was placed up to prevent his and any other evil entity's entrance into our world. However, that does not prevent him from sending his minions, sending his powers, sending his influence out through the permeable small gaps in this gate, so his influence remains. He only has two horns, right? Oh, four ones. Four. Two that he maintains on himself to this day, and two that were severed, enchanted, and bequeathed into two of his, or well, at the time, one of his champions. And all these many months you've been in possession of the horn you have. Yes. And you don't have another one down in that vault. <laughs> we do not. What have you learned of the one you do have? Well, this belonged to a great and terrible champion of Orcus. It was utilized in the Calamity, the war that came to the very gates of Vasselheim. Uh, this armored evil was destroyed and torn asunder, the horn scattered. We currently have some of our finest and brightest out in search of the other one, now that we know that they have and can be recovered. Not to any avail yet, but we're doing our best. If you hear any word of that horn, will you send word to us? Of course, and you do the same, please. Of course. One was dangerous enough. We need to discuss a few things, but we'll fetch the tongue. Very well. Thank you so much for your time. I don't have much of it. Um, if you have business to discuss with me personally, I would recommend doing it now. Otherwise, you'll be dealing with one of my advisors when you return. Do you know much about the Nine Hells? Um, that's a complicated subject. What do you need to know? I fear we have to travel there. <laughs> Why, pray tell, do you intend to travel there? Um, 
There is a rock chaucer? After my brother and our cleric friend Pike. And unfortunately, I fear he will return if we don't snuff him out at the source. It's already made one attempt. Hmm. It's only a matter of time. I, I have dealt with fiends. I have dealt with devils. I am not a specialist on the hells, but there are a few places where you could possibly research this information. Um, the majority of such research is found in the, the presence, or at least in the grasp, of the Cobalt Soul. They do have one small temple here in the city, and they have one uh, over in Taldore. Either one will have some semblance of research at their disposal. Um, what I can tell you is, in asking about Orcus and the Abyss, those are demons, entities, savage, chaotic, and selfish, hard to read, societies that twist, crumble, and rebuild a rate that only insanity can seem to drive madness, and hunger drives the Abyss. But the Hells, the Hells are built on tyranny. They are built on societies, power structures, subservience and dominance. Whereas few mortals dare tread in the abyss, there have been some, even many from many different realms, who go to the Hells to do business. Do you know what sort of people might survive there? Will fit in. Powerful ones. Ones that stay out of sight. Ones that don't make a scene. Just know they're very clever. And above all else, they seek your soul. Big. All right. Thank so you for we'll, uh, time. we'll go to the Cobalt Reserve. All right. One of my advisors will receive the tome upon its delivery. Fabulous. Thank you. Good luck. He stands up. As soon as you begin to stand up, the seats are already immediately pulled out from behind you. You kind of abruptly get to your seat. The guards separate them. He leaves with his advisors, and you guys are led out of the temple back onto the winding staircase and into the heart of Asselheim. I pull uh, Vex into an alleyway. Um, <clears throat> I, d I don't know what the right thing to do is. I thought one thing going in there, mm -hmm. and now I think maybe you were right. I, I have not wanted to go to that temple, though. Sh she has finally been speaking to me again. All right. When, what about? When I died, I saw her. I have dreamed of her already. And, and she speaks of some sort of purpose on the horizon. And I don't know if she's talking about your promise you made or what, but she is with us. And, and I barely know what the fuck I'm doing, but I know that she doesn't want that book to exist, and I'm, honestly, I am frightened of going to that temple because I want time. I want time with you. I want time with her. Keyleth, I want time. Right. And I don't want to lose that time now. I want to be selfish for a little while. We've been working so fucking hard, by all, all rights we should be dead. You think if you go to the Raven Queen's temple, she'll claim you for her own right now? And well, I don't know. I don't know. And look at this, and I start to unbuckle the front of my chest. Relax, look at this. What, what am I seeing? <laughs> you see right around his heart, there's a dark spot in the skin where some dark veins kind of just travel for about an inch or two across. What the fuck is this? I don't know. When did it happen? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Did it happen after you died? I think so. 
hurts a little bit. What the fuck? So I... We have to get you to a cleric, that's not normal. <clears throat> not really, no. I'll cover it back up. Are you sure it's related to her? But I, I think you were right. And, and I think that they're going to hold that and someone will take it, whether it's in a hundred years or a thousand years, and she doesn't want it, and... Well, they're holding the Horn of Orcus. Playing devil's advocate. Yeah, they already have that. They yeah. don't have this. Then let's go to the Raven Queen's temple. All right. You want to go now? Yes. Let's go. Okay, well, you guys make your way to the uh, Raven's Eyrie. We go to you two. You guys are currently looking for a library. Who wants to make the investigation check to ask for information? Um, I'll do it, that's funny. Would <laughs> I have known anything about what that thing was? Um, not really. It doesn't look diseased, it looks bruised almost. It's, it's, it's just a strange looking bruise. We can see some of the veins are dark and, and visible, almost like varicose near the surface. Um, like trauma, uh, sure kind of, yeah. But but it doesn't, it doesn't look. It doesn't look like right, Sean. Malignant. It does. Yeah, no, it's not okay. like that. All right. So we have the book. They went to the sanctuary. We are going to the library. Yes. Okay. Okay. As far as no, I know, yes. that's what you guys were searching Wait, I for. We had the book. It's in the. It's in the. It's in the. Wait, no, the book's in the the book's in the bag. And I'm the one with the lowest. Grog has the book. I, Hilarious. you guys, I thought our whole thing was that we Don't were worry, taking we'll the, for the no book to the sanctuary, yeah, and then you guys were trade. like, we're going to the sanctuary because you guys totally gave me shit when I was like, the library! And you were like, not the library, but apparently we are. Yes. All right, let's go to the library. One, I rolled a 16. Two, 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 one. It's like Vox Machina has a hard time planning. <laughs> <laughs> Don't what? agree with him. It's crazy. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> I'm the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new guy. <laughs> All right, 16, investigation. And okay. I assume, we said we had the book. We thought we did. We were, we were not paying attention. Did you say you took the book? I thought we took the book. That I thought was we our took whole the book. I thought we took the book too. But the it, it, occurs, it occurs to me it was actually book. in the bag that Grog was holding. But I would assume if we said we were taking the book, that means we would. If then you guys get said you're taking the book, Grog, you said you heard them take the book. I did. I, mean, I thought you said you were taking the book to go look yeah. at the wherever. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we have the book. Okay. We have All right. I'll take that as consensus to say that you guys have the book. Oh, I used the book to make the wig. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's all paper. It's glued paper. under the cloak. Make a wisdom paper saving check. Um, paper mache of evil. Okay. Uh, you guys, not having a bag of holding, uh, are clutching the tome. It's a big tome. It's like. I thought we put it in a box, right? It's my book in no. a box. No. <laughs> I didn't have a box. It was my no book box. in a box, it was a baby. Book wrapped in cloth in the bag of holding. In a box. We wrapped it in cloth. <laughs> So there you go. You have a tome wrapped in cloth under your arm. You guys spend mm -hmm. about an hour or so yeah, asking around. Out. The locals, <laughs> you know, they're not say they're not friendly, but not all of them are well versed in what you're asking. They say library. Some of them are more simpler folk. Are like I don't. And eventually, somebody says, "Oh, you can head over to the um, what's it called? The uh, the Cobalt Vault. Um, this is it's in the." It's in the Kind of the southern region of the Quad Roads. That's exactly what I was looking for. All right, yeah, I'll show you. And the guy kind of gives you a little couple directions down the road, and you make your way there. And it's similar to the Cobalt Reserve in Western, but it's it's about a quarter of the size. Okay. Um, the Cobalt Reserve is is the center of the 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 Cobalt Soul Monk Order, the the, the Iun worshippers that gather information and, mm -hmm. and maintain it. Um, uh, there, you know, as as Iun's presence was kind of shattered slightly during the, the Calamity um, in the, the battle against the Chain God. Uh, her presence in Vasselheim was kind of diminished and then regrew through the, uh, the Cobalt Soul in Westrun. And so it's kind of just expanding back into Vasselheim. But you make your way to the structure. It's, it's uh, the exterior of it is this kind of light gray stone. It's a, a cylindrical building with a Maybe three different doorways uh, around the outside, and a giant, bright blue and black marbled dome on the top. 
Uh, it looks somewhat transparent, like it's made of a glass type material. Um, as you step into the front, uh, it's actually, you can see a, a central chamber within the inside that's also cylindrical. So you have a small kind of walk around hallway on, on the immediate inside of this giant structure, and then the actual library is in the interior. And so on the outside, you see a few books, and there are some paintings and tapestries in the walls, and you see a few uh, varying monks walking around, uh, a handful that are kind of curious in turn as you walk in. They're all wearing the uniform uh, dark gray and blue robes of the Cobalt Soul. And there is a desk at the front uh, where you have a young woman of olive skin sitting, uh, her hair kind of short and wavy with thick very thick spectacles adorning the front of her nose. Um, youngish, maybe uh, mid twenties. Uh, she looks up as soon as you guys approach. Ah, oh, good day. Uh, I, I fear we're still in the process of uh, preparing the interior. But uh, uh, what what do you require? We were hoping for access to some of the deep research archives. We've been looking around. We have several. Uh, complicated matters that we need to research, and we heard that you had a wonderful collection, and we were hoping to gain access to some materials, uh, preferably of the histories of Orcus, the Nine Hells, a few a few various things. I am terribly sorry, that type of research is only for uh, Cobalt Soul members. Um, Who could we talk to about special, special access? I'm sure that there must be somebody in charge. I apologize. I am on. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna have. To. This I am Keyleth of the Arashari, and this is Percival Frederick Stein von Musa Kowalski Dorolo the Third. Close enough. Ooh. Um, we, oh, we're a, a part of the group Vox Machina. We've been through here before. We're part of the Slayer's Take. This is a matter of great importance. So. If there is any type of upper management we can talk to. <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Oh, no. Who wants to talk yeah. to the library? library. Yeah. It's Keyleth's specialty. Solid start. It's going yeah. right. Oh, it's so upper, so almost so close. So close. Mm, 11. Gulp. Gulp. Uh, I, I mean, no offense, but uh, I, I don't think we have the kind of research we'll, that you're looking for that we, we, we would also possibly like to make a donation, Ooh. and I pull out the Manual of Quickness of Action, place it upon the table. She kind of adjusts her glasses for a second and reaches into the desk and pulls out like a small white gem and kind of passes it over, and as she does, you can see the, uh, the front of the tome seems to glow, almost like you're in a black light over something that was uh, reactive to it. Covered in semen. <laughs> oh, Scanlan. As soon as I said it, I was waiting, <laughs> waiting for Sam on that one. Sure. <laughs> Thank you for that <laughs> for me for all time. Oh, it scans over. Damn it. Um. Perhaps. Uh, give me just a moment, please. Uh, and she kind of slides the book in your direction, gets up and exits through one of the small doors in the side that you didn't notice until now. It's just a, it's part of a similar stone. Just gives way and then closes behind her. Well, we'll see what happens now. And yet, you know, worst case scenario, I also have this book that Scanlan read that's on how to be a good leader. Um, that hold on to that one. All right, I'll hold on to it. <laughs> yes. The door opens again, and she comes back out, uh, followed by uh, a, a, a man of uh, very, very dark skin, bright, soft eyes that kind of crack on the sides from, uh, you can gather a lot of smiling. Um, he wears the same uniform, blue and gray robes, but uh, as he walks, you can hear what sounds almost like a faint, almost like, like like jewelry kind of clinging, but you don't see any jewelry on him. And as he approaches, his arms are kind of folded into themselves. And, uh, he steps forward quietly, looks at the book for a second, looks up at the two of you and smiles. Uh, hello, my name is Kusuo. And I am in charge of looking over this extension of the Cobalt Reserve's reach and collection. You have come to offer this book as trade. 
Yes. And well, you are seeking what? Well, we are in a bit of a bind. Have you? We are members of a traveling group of adventurers known as Vox Machina. We uh, recently helped defeat the Chroma Conclave. I'm familiar. I with was your hoping that. Uh, blade, yes. It is our job to collect information and history and record of it, so I'm very aware. Well, our, the deeds and those things that must be done have not yet been fulfilled, and we have just a few last treacherous events that we must complete before the Chroma Conclave is completely put to rest, one of which has to do with Orcus and the other with the Nine Hells. Yes, a Rakshasa. And we are desperate for knowledge that may uh, keep us safe in our travels, prepare us for our enemies. Come with me. And he takes the book and sweeps it up and it vanishes into his robe. Nice. Worth it. <laughs> um, he leads you into the, the small doorway weird. that you watch kind of open and shut before. And on the inside, you go from this kind of barren outer uh, walkway into this large cylindrical library that is from floor to ceiling about 60 feet tall with dozens of, uh, of ladders that move around. You can see uh, books are in the process of being put up, some books are being categorized. It looks like there are stacks that have just arrived that are in the process of being researched and copied. There are a number of these monks that are at different tables in the process of making copies of books. This this is specifically a, a repository for the gathering of and guarding of information. Um, in the center of the chamber, there is a spiral staircase that leads to an upper platform um, that has another series of chairs, either a research or reading uh, section, and there are only a handful of people on the interior that are not dressed in the same way that these monks are. Um, but each one of them is attended by a monk. And you recall. Look familiar? Any any uniforms that look recognizable? Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> yeah, use that one. Uh, that's um, weird. It's on another dice. There, that's better. Oh, that's good. What is that? It's oh, a nineteen. Look at that. What a perception? Perception. Uh, twenty-one. Sorry, twenty. Yeah, twenty-one. Okay, so you glance. No. Over Jesus. Thirty-one. There we go. Nineteen. It's like your wisdom's pretty high. Plus, yeah, yeah. Thirty-one. Okay. Um, you look around really fast, glance at each person in this that is not of the Cobalt Reserve's uh, attire. No one you recognize, um, but they all appear to be fairly affluent, and they're all in the process of uh, reading through some sort of thick book with a stack next to them, varying sizes, and the, the monk is just standing there patiently, watching them as they do so. That's disconcerting. And you recall from your first time at the Cobalt Reserve that the that no books can be taken from the reserve. They can be read within the interior, they can be copied, notes can be taken, but you cannot remove them, and the monk that is assigned to you is both as a guide and to make sure you don't take anything right. you're not supposed Theft to. That's protection, yes. yeah. Um, and it seems that uh, Kusuo yeah. <laughs> has taken upon himself to be your assigned monk. It's quite a bustle today, this is impressive. Mm. It is more than what we are used to, usually, mm. um, but we are happy to know that people are interested in knowledge any given day. Any reason for the sudden spark in interest? <laughs> well, recent events of dragons terrorizing countrysides leads people to want to defend themselves and learn of these occasional terrors. Good on them. Anyway, follow me. And he leads you to the spiral staircase, to the back of the staircase, as it comes and meets with the floor. There is a, a large rug that sits as part of the decor there, and uh, he kind of glances around, and using his foot, his toe kind of clips the edge of it and flicks up and catches the, uh, the rug, folds it and sets it down in one swift motion you weren't expecting, and with the dust that kind of sets off, you now see what looks to be a trap door of the same material as the hardwood floor of the in, of the uh, uh, library, with a small chain that he then bends down carefully, tugs and lifts, and you can see a staircase that descends below. Can you do that with your toes? Not with my toes, no. That's the name of the rose shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> Love that book. The books you require, we keep in the cellar. So, please, after you. 
uh, is a staircase. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm committing. I'm committing. This is going down. There's an escalator. You're, you're <laughs> dog pedaling your way through the darkness. Uh, <laughs> you guys descend, and the, the trap door closes behind you, and it is pitch black. Um, you have no vision. You can see the vicinity. The stairs go down maybe 20 feet. However, as soon as the trap door, trap door closes, a soft glow emanates from behind you, and you can see there is some sort of a uh, a dangling wristband with a small glass marble that hangs at the end that is now glowing with a soft candlelight. And uh, Kusuo is like holding his arm in front of him as it dangles like a like a candle. And he just slowly brushes past you and leads the way down before the stairs stop and level off into an open chamber, a square room, the cellar, as he called it. Um, there inside, you see um, Candelabras flickering in the corners. There's four of them. There's two near you and two on the far side. Um, within this shadowed subterranean chamber, you see shelves and locked cases throughout. Um, some cases are glass, some are just almost crate like, but they have locks on the sides. And on these shelves, there, it isn't books stacked to each end. Each book is facing forward and seems to be placed deliberately. And some of them are chained in, some of them have chains attached to them that uh, are dangled from the piece. This is where all these secret books are kept. This is the, the private collection. Of course, I want to get out. <laughs> um, as soon as you guys enter the space, two monks of the Cobalt Soul spin out of the corners and immediately stand in a defensive position with their arms out in front of them. And then as soon as they see Kusuo smiles and nods, they put their guard down, arms together, and they bow for Kusuo. Um, Kusuo turns back up the shoulder. Do not worry. This is while an insurer. They are assigned to watch over. So. Stand aside, help our guests. He walks forward and leads you through some of these cases. And you look, and they're made of different woods. Some of them seem to have been brought from different locations. Um, and there are scroll cases. There are giant just wads of, of ancient parchment that are kind of clustered together and, and bound with some sort of a leather strip. Uh, you can see tomes all across the way of different fronts and sizes, and so many of them are very old and ruined. Um, and then to the back right corner of this chamber, you see uh, as Kuso pulls, what you didn't notice before, and that jangling sound you were hearing before, is a giant ring of over 100 keys that he pulls off of his neck. He turns it and begins just thumbing through the keys very quickly, like he knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> Catches one key, looks at it, and walks over to one of the cases in that corner of the room, and just undoes the locks, but they're a different key for each lock. And he goes and finds each one, first try, knows exactly where they go. As each lock is taken, he opens the case, and on the inside, you smell this scent of, of dust and ash. And there are four books in there, two of which look damaged, um, but they all look very old. And uh, he reaches in, and grabs two of them. One of them is one of the damaged ones, one of them is not. You seek information on Orcus. Sets one tome down on one of the nearby closed cases. And the Nine Hells. And places the other next to it. I just try and see if I can discern what the other two books are just from looking in and being a nerd. Uh, you are, none, they don't have any labeling on the cover. No, nothing. All right. Fascinating. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, I suppose, we'll sit and get to it. <coughs> that I well. sit down and I open the book. Yes. Well, before I touch Which it. Which one are you opening? This doesn't react poorly to people handling it, does it? There's no. He, he, he kind of arcs an eyebrow towards you. No, we. Part of our distinct training is to uh, disable any sort of wards, should you wish to research. Excellent. Mm. I, Which one are you opening? I, I just opened the first one just to look into to, to, to the, the Orcus. Orcus one? And? Do you speak Abyssal? I do not speak Abyssal. The, the Orcus <laughs> tome, uh, you aren't able to read. It you is all written in Abyssal. Only the twins. And the other book. The other book. I open up the Nine Hells, take a look. Mm -hmm. That one is actually written in common. Okay. Weird um, question. Yes. Abyssal. Yes. 
I know creatures who are uh, from the abyss, right? You've, I've encountered them. You have encountered demons in your past, yes. If I do like a shape change into a demon, can I then read abyssal? Let me look at the spell real fast. You're gonna change go. into a. We're gonna. I no, would let him know. I would give him like a disclaimer. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a really weird birthmark. Don't panic. Let's bring it on. I, I also I think well, yeah. I, I support you. Well, yeah, I'll I wait mean, for if this. he really was a demon, why would you know he need to do research? Do Who is my father? <laughs> I, I don't know. So maybe he has daddy issues too. Genealogy at the yeah. nine hells. Uh, is, it does not specify, but it says you gain the yeah, abilities. I think I've read like it says you keep the same intellect, though, right? Yeah, you keep the same you intellect keep your and mental everything. Stats. Correct. It doesn't, but like but you get your the abilities. You're not like a bird. Yeah, you retain all your skills and saving throw proficiencies in addition to getting those of the creature. Oh, in addition. In addition. Uh, so you don't know. I don't know. Might as well try. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to take a moment also before this happens. Open the common book. Take a moment and gently ask the good sir if they have a reading glass around because I still don't have any reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> he gives a curious look. But of course, and he uh, snaps oh, his fingers. One of the other monks reaches, darts off for a second, and then returns a moment later with uh, a small wooden case that opens up. And in the inside, there are four different types and thickness uh, uh, tick, of reading glass to go tick. through. You find one that will work okay. Coke bottles. Perfect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Big band aid right in the middle. Uh, <laughs> you, I'm going to let you deal with this other end of things because I'm going to mm. sit and read. Mm. Mm. What was that demon guy we encountered? Has he had a name? Phil. You mean the pit fiend? Which, or the, what, oh, you mean like Senecare? No, he was a Genasi. Oh. The pit fiend was a devil, devil not a demon. but we have encountered. But who was the guy who lied to it? Le, who he lied to us, and you said devil at one point, and he was actually a demon. And we were like, was Did you hang on? Hang on, hang on. He said he was a demon, and he was actually a devil. devil. That was a glabrezu. That, that, do, do you remember that? Oh, was, was that the that was what killed Mike. What about what about the the, the yeah. basement way back when? Where we found you. Yeah, the remember the bones? No, 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 this is after you found Percy. This, this was in the, yeah, the, the, the palace. Anymore. What about the, the succubus? Bones, the succubus and the thing with the bones? Succubus are, yeah, 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 yeah. We did kill a succubus. You did, yeah. In Creek's house. And they're demons, right? They're fiends. You're not sure. Like, you're not, you don't have enough knowledge. False. Are you trained in religion? No. You could ask me. Well, I'm not trained you're, in religion either. You're, Never mind. you're not too familiar. <laughs> Part of this research is kind of learning the distinguishing factors between fiends. You don't okay. have a whole lot of knowledge okay. on that. You know what? You're reading the book on the Nine Hells. That'll tell us what fiends there are. All right. Right? Maybe. Maybe. I'm reading the book. Read the book. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Saviors of the universe we are. So. Do you know oh, the Dewey Decimal God. System? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what are you trying to find? Do you want to just read all the information? Um, It'll take I'm, you I'm <laughs> skipping specifically through Orcus and Asa since she mentions what well, There's no Orcus in this book. It's oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, um, yeah. Hierarchies, I, I'm trying to get a general overlay of, of, of some of the information about Okay. If, if there's a natural enemy for this, for, for, for the, the Rakshasas, uh, any, any weaknesses where we can find okay. them. I mean, you do know that there is a very strong infernal hierarchy of hell. Of all the hells. And I'm, um, I'm also seeing what the book also specializes in. <laughs> yes, Thank essentially. You. That's what I'm it looks like as he's reading. Visual guide. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very rigid power structure here. And the whole purpose of most devils is to try and gain power and ascend their rank by proving themselves stronger or tearing others down to take their position. So anyone lower would be an enemy, anyone higher would be would probably. Well, I mean, they'll work together because it is a, it, it is it is a lawful evil society. Mm -hmm. It is a society that only functions because of its structure. Um, yeah. So so it is tyrant and underlings, and underlings will work and serve things they hate that are more powerful in hope of gaining the favor, especially since higher <laughs> devils can bequeath lower devils the chance to ascend to a higher tier. Is there stories of anybody defeating Rakshasa before? <clears throat> Uh, you you glance through and I mean Rakshas is like any other devil can be killed, um, if you can you know go to it and kill it yeah, um, but there are there are many tiers here just so you know there there are arch devils at the top, that are the the rulers of each these are these are the, the essentially the, the top ranks, 
Um, there are greater devils below them. Greater devils include uh, horned devils, Erinyes, which you've encountered, pit fiends, which you've encountered, Pitfiend. and ice devils. And they are the high, they are the greatest of the devils below the arch devils. That's then you have lesser devils, which are like imps, spine devils, bearded devils, barded devils, chain devils, bone devils. You get all these names, and you get some some drawings and sketches of some of these creatures, and they all look awful. Um, lowest in this rank are. Uh, lemurs. Lemurs are the <laughs> souls. Yeah, I know. They, well, you like this. Um, they are the souls of people that have passed, who have either done enough evil deeds that they, they fall under the sway of one of these archdevils, or they've most of them are acquired by making a deal with a devil. Contracts. They're big into contracts. Their whole their their power structure is based on what sort of of souls they can, what power they can gain, what people they can sway, what people they can convince to Lemurs are lend infernal them. Pokemon is basically what you're getting. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Well, once a soul has come under the sway of a devil and is brought to the Nine Hells, it either can become just a lost, wandering soul, uh, used as, as, a, as a source of energy, uh, and, and, and feeding that, most of them convert into lemurs, which are like the low-level slaves, or they're ever-tortured kind of flesh masses that... So look um, like the scream. Yeah, sure, kind of yeah. Odd. It's oh, the, they're sad. the tortured souls of the nine hells, yeah. oh, and if a lemur does manage to somehow do a good enough work over an extended period of time, Centuries and... it can be ascended to a lesser devil by pleasing its masters by whatever the case may be. So, like, there is there is a chance that's how devils kind of ascending are are, are brought there, to higher stations. There's a there. few that have crawled their way up. Yeah, and the pit fiend you killed probably returned and got demoted. Oh, <laughs> to a lesser. Yeah. Like they get turned into something smaller. If something really powerful and cool that was given a station was suddenly walked into the street and killed by a bunch of people in the city yes. and came back and was like, they killed me. They're like, you're weak, obviously. And reading the structure, yeah, you probably really ruined that guy's day. <laughs> like, like he's he's probably going to have centuries of getting his shit back together. Oh yeah, he's no, probably he's, really pissed. Yeah, like you 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 basically made him lose his house and his dog and his wife. Like the children, oh. they, they, they you turned him into a country they, song. Do they talk about anything like like the like the children that we saved? The the the, the effective angelic angelic. Why the an, those little ch angel children? Those seraphic uh, seraphic uh, children. There is very little talk about celestial celestial blood divas, um, other than the fact that there's been a long-standing battle since the since the founding, since the uh, the the prime gods and betrayer gods divided early in the creation of Exandria. And there's, there's no talk about using celestial powers as some sort of weapon against these creatures. Uh, I mean. Not celestial power necessarily, but some of these entities are susceptible to um, various divine magics and abilities, and that is a, a strong kind of back and forth between the two sides. Um, the uh, but the big war that happens is between the devils and the demons, okay. the uh, the abyss, which is the nature of chaos and evil, and just driven hunger um, at whatever cost, versus the power hungry devils. Which build structure dominance, expanding their territory and ruling through uh, through structure and power. Okay, so so within evil there is chaos versus or order is kind yeah. of the the internal the two struggle of evil. Devils all right, that's demon. that's very useful. This is all very useful. Um, but there are many, there are many tears of the hells. And um, does it nine, mention please. any of like you know abyssal you know fiends that they particularly hate that we might have encountered? <clears throat> I'm uh, just flipping. I'm just going to keep skimming. While he's skimming, can we jump back in just for 30 seconds? <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, actually, I'm happy to time pass and we'll read. Before we go in. Should make sure we don't get lost yeah. on this. No, we, just 30 things. seconds. Before we go in, um, I think I should have the book. I'll carry the book in. Give me the book. We have no, I the thought, book. No, I thought you took the book. I didn't take the book. I don't carry books. No, you, you had the book. I thought you were lying to the guy. You actually had the book, right? You took the book when we left. I didn't take the book. I thought you took the book. Are you fucking Are you fucking me? serious? Fuck. Can we direct people to the Benny Hill? Steve Dogg song for this? Let's go to the library. All right. Meanwhile. So were we supposed to take the book? <laughs> or were they supposed to take the book? Well, I thought you said that we were taking the book. Well, I also thought we were going to the reserve, and now we're in the library. Are you? Are you? Unveiling the book? No, we are not. We have okay. it. We have we're, not unveiled we're it. To no. The okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep reading while they head. You guys, if you want to. I'm so okay. confused on our plan. So there are there are many things you learn. One, the first layer of Avernus, 
which is the first layer of the hell. It is a terrible, blackened, rocky wasteland, rivers of blood. It's 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 a bad place. Um, and usually, you have to travel from each layer into the next one. There are very few portals that lead to the hells, and usually, any that do start at Avernus, and you have to work your way in. Um, that um, that area is ruled by Zariel, which is the Archduchess of Avernus. Um, this is also the realm of Tiamat. Ah, um, yeah, okay. You glancing through and trying to find things that catch your attention. This is a large room. You could spend days and days researching this, but you don't have a lot of time. And you're looking for specific things. Uh, Dis is the second oh, layer of the Nine Hells. Uh, it is a labyrinth of canyons wedged between sheer mountains filled with iron ore. Um, there are iron roads that span through the canyons, uh, with, through a series of bridges that lead over these giant crevasses in this uh, dark landscape. Um, the, le- the ruler of the second layer, and uh, the lord currently, is a Dispater. Dispater? Yes. Dispater, which is. Uh, Similar to James Spader. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> That's Spader. Half cousin. Dispater. Yeah. <laughs> Talks kind of like him too. It's really creepy. <laughs> um, so wait, it's the realm of Dis, and the leader is Dispater. Yeah, they're not that clever. It speaks and the it, first, the first layer of hell is also referred to as the layer of Inhimanim. What? Avernus. Avernus. However, what does catch your attention immediately is on Dis. There is there is a city called the Iron City of Dis, that is a <laughs> massive metropolis. Um, that is primarily where most extraplanar entities travel to do business. It is, in, it is in many cases an open market. So it's probably it's safer. It's, it's one of the most, it's one of the safer areas for a mortal to walk through. Comparatively, it's Comparatively. still in one of the hells. Um, but because it is such a center for business, it's a popular location for extraplanar travelers, it's a popular place for uh, succubi, incubi to travel. It's a popular place for rakshasas. Um, ah. it, 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 it specifically <laughs> brings up uh, hags, creatures that deal uh, that deal in business, that deal in exchanges, that deal in contracts uh, beyond the usual devil ones. A lot of them tend to go to the Iron City of Dis. So that's okay. I'm marking that. I'm putting a pin on my Pinterest board. Um, Atlas Obscura, that shit. Atlas Obscura, the hell out Dis. of that. The City of Dis. City of Dis. Oh, Dis. I can, give you, the, I can give you the rest of this to read Please. on the break if Just, you'd like to. Yeah, give it to me. Because give it's it a lot of information. Oh, no, like, yeah. let's, let's but, not, let's not. But that's the one that sticks out to you. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to kill Travis. No, if, as, as far, and looking specifically for the mention Travis of Rakshasas. Travis a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and looking specifically for the mention of Rakshasas, that's, I mean, there are sections about the creatures and talking about their history. Sure. And, and um, how, how they, you know, the, they originally, uh, you know, stemmed from the hells and burst out of the prime, the prime plane. It goes into that kind of their history there. Um, the rest of it doesn't have as much of a correlation to where you would look for such a creature. They do exist on multiple layers of the hells, but. City of Dis seems to be the winner. At the very least, a place where you can get information that can That's lead you I'm, I'm very excited. Any, okay. any information on how to get there? <laughs> Oh, it won't be a problem. Be yeah, interplanar travel, too. Interplanar travel. Oh, yeah, I guess I can plane shift there. Yeah, we, we, we got it. I do a very detailed uh, look at what the Iron City of Dis seems like. I'll so sketch a little bit of it out of the book as well. There. Okay, cool. Yeah. And there are, there are, there are some, some descriptors in there, some mild sketches of... Um, one thing it does speak of is the the tower. The <laughs> Iron... Tower. The Iron Tower of Dispeter, which is essentially this massive central structure to the city, where the actual Archdevil himself looks down upon the city and keeps watch over most business that he can. Great stuff, Roll Damcar. Yeah. Good job. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> dagger, dagger. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that is. All thank right. you. Well, you guys completing your research. Taryn and Grog. Yes. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Do you have the book? <laughs> <laughs> Which book? Never mind. Let's go find a place to buy some potions. All right. Are you like? Are you accustomed to buying things? Very much so. Oh, do you have like a personal shopper? I actually do. Yeah. Nice. Well, show me how it's done. All right. I'll take you under my wing, so to speak. Yeah, well, I'm a bit <laughs> big, so I don't know how you're going to do that. Doty, join us. And as you guys walk through the streets, 
everyone stares, partially because you are a bright, shiny beacon of Hello. finely polished gems and armor, flanked by a massive, bearded Goliath, and whatever the fuck Doty is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hi, greetings, good day, good afternoon, don't mind them. Ah, they're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> About five minutes of walking before two armored bastions come up in their kind of uh, piecemeal leather and, and scale breastplate armor with their heavy fur cloaks over their shoulders, holding spears. You! Uh. You walk with strange company. What's your business here in Vasselheim? We are wandering uh, <clears throat> merchants trying to find uh, find some textiles to buy uh, to resell in other lands. That's all. Don't mind my uh, traveling companions. They're my protectors. I travel as a merchant with a lot of coin, and so I found these two at a at a leper colony and uh, nurse them back to health. It was a, also a, like a workout gym, sort of a, a muscle man place, so they're, they're really buff. <laughs> but they're also lepers, so that explains their matted hair. <laughs> Make a deception check, please. <laughs> You get, you get to experience this as a, as a normal person now. I'm so excited. This is, what, deception? Yeah. Ooh, I better use luck. <laughs> Ooh, no, nah, that's worse. <laughs> yeah, so I use the higher one the or the, one just the, the second one? <laughs> use, I believe you have to use better. Yeah. I'll double check. I think you have to use the second roll. I can't remember. I think it's the second roll. Hold on. Matter what. I get to the well, it don't matter. One was. <laughs> then choose. Oh, oh I choose? choose? Okay, that's 10. Let's see. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. It's not total of ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He leans in real fast. Oh wow. That's that's gotta be unfortunate. Being so buff and so filled with leprosy. <laughs> it is their cross to bear. That's why this one doesn't even talk. And uh this one is a is a leper of few words. <laughs> she kind of leans back, and the two guards watch you guys and kind of nod and step back and let you continue to pass. Thank you. Oh my God! It Thank worked. <clears throat> might I inquire from you, fine gentlemen, where we might find some uh, some medicine or healing uh, healing potions? These lepers are set to relapse. That, that way? All right, I'll head that way then. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> good day to you. Keep warm. As you guys keep walking, they slowly close behind you and just begin to follow from about 30 feet back. That was amazing. Have you ever lied to anybody before? Never. I think I have a talent for it, though. I, um... I, 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 I just felt the words coming out, and well, I went with it. It was a thrill, right? It was thrilling. Yeah. It was exciting, and they were going with it. They were eating it up. Yeah. I had them right where I wanted them. I could have told them fucking anything. It was great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Like on a scale of one to two, how do you think it went? I mean, two's the higher of the two, right? <laughs> oh, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. I feel nice. good. Yeah. Now remember, if anyone asks you, just go, oh, I'm a leper, oh, or something ooh, like that. Ooh, I'm a leper. Ooh. That's good, that's okay. good, that's good. Yeah, no good. Yes. Are they following us now? Oh, I hadn't looked. <laughs> you turn around right at them, and 30 feet back they're walking, and they just stop as you stop. Still think it went well? I think they're following us. <laughs> really? What do we do? You know, it was probably you told such a good story, they're just fascinated by you now. What do we do? I've never been followed by guards before. You should probably act casual. Or you could drop some money on the ground and let all the people run and try and collect it and make a diversion. It's up to you. Are there people around? There's a few. Like maybe. Just dump all your money on the ground. Well, 
They'll come out of the houses, the woodwork. I was warned about you and money. I won't listen to that, mm. but I will <laughs> try to act casual. Mm. <clears throat> I'll just take off my ah, gigantic diamond encrusted helmet. Sort <laughs> <laughs> ah, of let my hair down. <laughs> How long is his long blonde hair? Uh, they're just past the shoulders. Wow. wow. Just free flowing, no, no fancy braids or No, no, or just, just free flowing, perfectly arched in the front because it's been pulled back into the helmet. It's glorious. It's oh BG tastic. Ah, what a day, am I right? You're, you're talking real loud. That's what casual people do. No, they, they don't. don't care they don't what do people that. think. Volume control, real important. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just want to take a load off and just rest here for a while. Not going anywhere, just sitting here and acting real boring, right? <laughs> yep, yep. How are we going to stay here and find the health potions at the same time? Guide me. You've been doing this longer. No, you're please. really doing well. I mean, I'm learning a lot right now. <laughs> Clearly, you are a well-traveled man. I just of don't mystery. know. All right, all right. I've read about situations like this. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just need to create a diversion, and while the guards are diverted, we run away fast as we can. Right. I literally told you about that one minute ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my, here's Grog, my plan. Make a perception check. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. You were getting close to the exterior of the building that you were pointing to by the guards. Uh, and you recognize it. It's a place where you previously purchased potions. Look, I hate to interrupt, right? Have you do you think you've done anything wrong? Illegal? Yeah. Have you done anything wrong? I don't think so, no. You've never I mean, been here before. Well, we are traveling around with an arcane being. I don't know if that's illegal, technically. Yeah, it's totally fine. Look, this place is where the goods are. You mean? Yeah. Potions and magical items? All sorts of stuff. I don't even know if his inventory is like improved since we've last been here, but he will give you a really great deal and it will give you a chance to prove to me how good of a salesman you are. All right. Yeah. But how do we shake the ards gay? What? Well, that came out weird. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think that through. <laughs> I mean, fucking <laughs> big I mean, you know, it's. What they do in the comfort of their own home is their own. I mean, I don't. Why don't you leave? No, I don't think there's any shaking them, right? Right. Why don't you leave old Twinkle Toes outside and we go in? Surely Dodie can, like, read or something. I mean, he can stay here and keep watch, but if they ask him anything, he will be. Mute. Is that all right, you think? <clears throat> What's wrong with that? All right. Maybe just tell him to, like, be cool. Doty. Which, as you turn, you see <laughs> he's been drawing in his book the entire time, sure. everything you guys have been discussing. Doty. Act cool. That means book down. Don't say a word. And if the guards get close, let us know with some sort of a sound. Thank you. Remember, you're a leper, so seem unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible creaking sounds. Good. All right, let's go inside. Yeah. So the guards are kind of closing the gap a little bit. You guys pick up pace, they pick up pace a little bit. You get to the outside of the building, uh, the doors are closed. You can open and get inside. The warm interior is lit up. You can see. Um, there's nobody else currently inside except for your old friend, <laughs> the potion seller, who's currently reading what looks to be some sort of a, well, you're not actually sure what, what's inside the book, but it's a small, like, handheld book, and he's kind of reading through a board. No, 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 no,
She's not here? She's not here, it's just the two of us. And your friend's very rich? Extremely. Do you see what he's covered in? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, just outside the door there? Yes. He's a man. Great, well then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Slick. So, what can I get you? We've got all sorts of salves and spices. We've got all sorts of, of incense. Uh, what are you looking for? Inside the shop, has it like um, grown or become more ornate since we've last been here? It does, actually. It, it, last time you were here, it was in the process of kind of being put together. The shop seems to be open, like fully open now and outfitted, though it doesn't seem to be getting much traffic. Um, as it is very empty, it looks very bored. So he seems <laughs> eager that, you know, he has customers. Um, and now, much more put at ease <laughs> that you've let him know that the, from his vision, the dragon woman did not come with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you first. Oh, uh, well, for myself, do you have any um, scrolls of, uh, spell scrolls or any sort of. Uh, one-use items that I could use in a fight or a, or a tangle with some bad chaps. Let me see what I've got. Things that could deceive, things that could use force against. Can you just through like a couple of uh, scroll pieces there? Let's see here, what do you might have? Nothing. Aha! <laughs> I do, should you be so interested. Currently carry one scroll that would surround you with a wreath of dangerous fire. Oh, all right. Uh, what kind of, uh, just around me or around uh, an area? Just around you. Anything that came too close would burst into flames and be burned. I, I have 13 of those right here. <laughs> so, do you have anything else? <laughs> not that that's not really impressive. That's really good, really good. I've got something that makes you jump. Yeah, I've, got, I've got that. <laughs> got something that makes you see in the dark. Yeah, I have a light already. <laughs> <laughs> anything that makes you... What do you, you want? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me that one scroll, the fire scroll. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe I could sell it and get something else, I don't know, Jesus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? Uh, I'm looking right now for the... It's here. You have to read a scroll, uh, right? Huh, what? You have to read a scroll, right? That I could yeah. read it to you, <laughs> if that's what you're asking. So uh, it looks you over. The scroll, I would put it a fair um, 6,000 gold pieces. Mm. Watch how it's done. Mm. <clears throat> I'm going to put an amount of gold on the table. I'd like you to consider it. And if it's to your liking, take it. And if not, just shake your head. And I'll put 200 gold <laughs> on the tip. <laughs> I'll put 200 more. I'll put 2,000 more. <laughs> And another 2,000. Make a persuasion check. 4,400. 17 plus seven! 24. 44. Take the gold. <clears throat> wow. Check and mate. You know Check and mate. You have a scroll of fire shield. <laughs> scroll of fire shield. Makes it better. Wow. Do you have anything that makes you like faster? I said I had something that makes you jump. No, 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 no. Further. I'm, I'm pretty good at jumping. What about like regular, um, regular like just healing potions? That I've got. You cleared me out of my other uh, various vials last time. Yeah, nothing new, no new exotics came No, I'm waiting on, trade's been a little slow. Looks like things are getting up and 
I'm on, so hopefully we'll have more soon. But for the time being, I do have some more healing potions. And he kind of goes into the back room and you hear him rummaging for a minute. You hear like one crate fall over and a couple things shatter and the guy's like, ah, God damn it! And eventually he comes back through the door and he's holding like in his arm a few clusters of various glass files. Some of them like they've been repurposed and like taped at the top, but they're functional. He kind of <clears throat> sets them down on the counter. All right, all right. So that would be, uh, I have six potions of healing and I have three of greater healing and one superior. Do I know how much these things tend to cost? Make an intelligence check. Oh. Uh, this is not a save. Yes, just, uh, just add your modifier. Uh, 20! Yes, actually. Uh, the healing potions can range around, you know, 75 to 100 gold pieces, generally, the regular ones. Uh-huh. The uncommon ones can range in the, somewhere in the 500 gold pieces if you know, a part range. The superior, um, however, are much rarer to come by, and the fact that it even has one at this point with how recently you guys cleared them out is pretty decent. That one can run anywhere between four or 5,000 gold pieces. And he is six, three, and one, is that right? Mm-hmm, six, three, and one. Okay. Do you want to get them? It seems like you've got all the money in the world. I mean, I can heal myself just fine, but I don't know about your Friends, do they have healing abilities? No, no. Well, they do. They like they touch you with their hand, and then like it all of a sudden it feels a bit better. A bit better. Yeah, I but, don't really know how that works. But they use potions. I've seen them use potions. Yeah, I'm normally pouring them in their mouths. <laughs> do you think uh, they would appreciate these? I don't know. I hadn't thought that far. You know, as a Remember a Vox Machina? What was that? Uh, bad allergies here. It could be like a really great gift, you know? Sort of like a. You know, like Keyleth gave you. Welcome me to the gang. Yeah. Mm hmm. Do you gift wrap here, sir? <laughs> um. For an additional charge, of yes, course, of, of course, course I give Of course, of right. course, for an additional charge. <laughs> what if we took the whole lot of those for 6,000 gold? The whole lot for 6,000. I'm afraid that is far under the price I'd be considering. Let me see here. And he does some kind of notations over here. He goes, hmm. You seem, from our previous experience, to be the, uh, quite the bargainer, my friend. Yeah, the brains. How would you say to the fair price of 10,000 gold pieces for the batch? Let me confer with my partner. How many on your hands is that? Yeah, no, both hands, how many? All, all. Two. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Too much. Yes, this man is insulting your intelligence, and you should be very angry right now. How about How about 9,000 gold pieces? Mm, you drive a very hard bug, oh, no. my big friend. However, because it's you, deal. Done. Pay the man. I would object to this. <laughs> this is coming out of my, my purse, and I, I insist that you negotiate with me and not uh, Terry, this man drives a really well-known establishment. If we leave here after having struck that bargain and we don't pay, there will be more guards outside. How about this? I can trade you something that is worth far more than the extra 3,000 gold this gentleman promised you. What would this be? It's a rare egg. <laughs> Magical in nature. It can save a life in any situation. And if you eat it when you are nearly dead, you will 
go back into battle with the strength and bravery of ten men, and you will not rest until your foes are dead. Make a persuasion check. Come on, man. Come on, Terry. This is deception, because you believe this wholeheartedly. Big. With 20? advantage? Is that reason? No. Oh. Is this deception or persuasion? This is persuasion. 22. Six thousand in the egg, you say? Very well. <laughs> he pushes the. Gentle. I. He'll be. <clears throat> he goes over and quickly reaches over and grabs like a like a thick towel like uh, pile of of cloth and kind of wraps it up carefully. <laughs> Sets it down. A pleasure doing business with you all. Uh, uh, uh. The gift wrapping. <laughs> Terribly sorry. My apologies. I'll be right to it. <laughs> uh, he turns and leaves the room. Terry, that was a personal gift from me to you. I know, but we're partners, as you just said, and I felt that you would you would approve of me doing so. I suppose I am a bit proud. King! What was that? You hear behind you guys at the doorway. <laughs> oh shit! Some of the, Im- oh, shit. the impacts of metal rapidly what? and heavily. What? what you Sword! Doing? Oh Jesus. The <laughs> <laughs> rod whips into a long sword, and you glance behind and you see walking through the doorway the very heavy, hulking figure of Dodie carrying two unconscious guards that are hanging from his hands. He goes. <laughs> What did you do? Give me those! <laughs> I'll punch them both one time each in the jaw, just for extra measure. <laughs> okay. Both jaws are very broken. Oh no. Well, your guy really did a number. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> everybody's gonna die. All right. Wait, so we're gonna wait, kill wait, we're everyone them? that we see we're in the next ten seconds. Even the shop owner. Yep, he's gotta die. Oh, All shit. right. All right. Partners, okay. right? Okay. I'll do is whatever like, you is say. There like, is there like a counter in the shop? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a counter in the front area. Is it wooden? Is it wooden? Yeah. Can he see through the counter? No, the proprietor is in the back room. Oh, great. He's, so I, he's I just, wrapping your wait, stuff wait, right he now. He doesn't know what this happened. Let's get rid of them. Get rid of them. But what's in the shop? Is there like, is there like a tapestry? Is there like a rug? Is there like? It's, it's not a very big. I mean, they, there is a secondary room to the side. It looks like there's an upper platform, but that looks like where his bedroom is, maybe. Uh huh. Um, there's a couple lanterns. It's it's warm lit on the interior, and as you're looking around, it's it's not a huge establishment, but I mean, make make no, no, a make wait, perception uh, check. I see, yeah, but, but, uh, hmm. Two. You have uh, no idea. Yeah, no, you're just you're panicking. I saw this in a tavern once. Let's sit him up. Like they're just sleeping and <laughs> nobody will notice. They have jaw. The jaws of the blood. Yeah, no, the no. jaws are terrible. Yeah, well, didn't you put a mask on, Donny? Let's do it again. I can't. I don't have extra masks. Yeah, no, no, but look, it'd be no Can you problem. Put them somewhere else. I, I sit. I sit one up in the corner and I sit the other one up and I like lean it on his shoulder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what? This is great, don't worry. I can I even I can tell that those are two <laughs> No, I've got a better idea. I take the cask of ale out of the bag and hold it and I just start pouring ale all over them. Like, Why would they be in here drinking? They're guards on duty! They're terrible guards. They make horrible life choices. They're in the long wrong line of work. I take two chalices and I throw it in their laps. Cool. Now I need you to vomit on them. I... I can't vomit. Do it right now. Put your finger down your throat and puke on these guys. Make an intimidation check, Rog. Oh, no, no. Come on, come 17, on. Seventeen. Puke on those fucking guys. What am I rolling? I'm gonna say. No. I'm gonna say make make an insight check. Sure. Sixteen. <laughs> vomit on those bitches. Sorry. <laughs> 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 and that's going to be gift forever. <laughs> Make a constitution saving throw. Oh my god. Natural 20. Oh my god. About 
30 seconds of you trying to gag yourself pass before the shop owner comes back no. with, with these beautifully packaged bundle of healing potions. So All right, so I... One second! One second! So I'm, I'm really sorry. These two gentlemen obviously have been off their ass. They came in here smelling a booze, looking for like something to make them feel better, I don't know, and they just passed out in your corner. Is there someone you know that we could call? I really hate just leaving them here. Maybe deception shit. <laughs> oh, my oh my god. god. Oh my god. Please, a four. Nine. Yes! <laughs> he slowly hands out this really nice bundle, uh, and, and it, it has like a little bow on it, and it's wrapped, and he hands it out to you, and she goes, Please, take this. And never come back. <laughs> Please. For the rest of the day. Ever again. Oh. Your presence has brought me no end of pain. Just go. Obviously, we have gotten the better end of this deal. <laughs> I think that that is true, absolutely. Do yes. you still have the. Go! Sword we should go. We should leave. All right. I, thank you for your business. <laughs> Good day to you. Let's go. Don't but, he come? But they. <laughs> Dory turns. <laughs> <laughs> and just comes running after you guys as you exit the show. Oh shit. That was amazing. What? Wow. Now I don't feel good. <laughs> wow. Good job. We gotta go. We gotta, like, um, hold up somewhere for a minute. You know, a drink? Please. Yeah. Is there a tavern near this um, shop? Uh, in the quad roads, yeah, there are actually quite a few taverns. As soon as we step outside, I barf all over the floor. <laughs> yeah. Where was that? Oh, I'm sorry. What the fuck? It just comes naturally. You I just, can't force it. You can't perform like oh. on command. <gasps> I needed you. <sighs> okay. You got more in there? No. It's just a one. Maybe a little. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. That looks like lucky charm. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Well, you guys get a drink. Uh, we're gonna get a. Quick bathroom break. We have a couple, couple more beats we want to get to before the night's over. Yeah. We're not going to go too long, trust me. Um, but we're going to take a quick bathroom break, and then we'll come back here in a few minutes. Uh, we do have one more giveaway here tonight for um, our friends, some awesome friends at Wormwood. We have a dice box here signed by the cast, a critical role. It is a uh, birch dice box. So uh, go it's ahead. Uh, what do we have? A, do we have a code for the chat room? Wormwood. Wormwood. <laughs> Go ahead and use one word, Wormwood, in the chat room at, at Twitch, over Twitch, the chat room over the break. We'll have a winner announced for you when we get back. Wormwood uh, with a Y. Yes, Wormwood with a Y, yes, as in the actual company. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Hello, I'm Lisa Loeb, and I'm here to talk with you about dinosaurs. <laughs> You want to say? You want to, what do you mean you want to save dinosaurs? What is this? Are you lying to you bloodthirsty death monster? Ah! Never quite get used to that sound.
table talk day Just direct your twitch to Geek and Sandre All around the world we'll get people to play And play and play and play and play We're celebrating game designers and the players Cards and dice and roleplay and slayers Teams or co-op, whatever your flavor Scream and shout Okay. April 29th is Tabletop Day! Hello, I'm Lisa Loeb, and I'm here to talk with you about dinosaurs. You want to say, what do you, what do you mean you want to save dinosaurs? What is this? Are you lightning, you bloodthirsty death monster! Ah! You never quite get used to that sound. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. So first and foremost, we have our winner in the chat room. Only 20s allowed. Uh, great name, by the way. Uh, you won the contest for this week. We're going to go ahead and get uh, your information and send you your uh, Wormwood box. Thank you again, Wormwood, for sending that so we can get that to you guys for free as the contest weekly. Um, back into the story, we were. So, you guys are drinking in Lang Lo. Yep. Uh, you guys are making your way to the library, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to finish up and try and get out, I guess. Okay. Um, I would also like to definitely talk about maybe having access later to yes, come back at some say. prior point. We, we want to talk to Kasuo and see. Yeah, just okay. on the way out. Yeah, on the, on, on the way out, as, as, as the tomes are, are placed back in and locked back up, uh, you talk to Kasuo on the way out. Uh, that is not to worry. Just make sure that you request me when you arrive. Okay. It would be Thank my you pleasure. so much. And I hope that that book finds a proper home and, and gives good is, is worthwhile. So thank of you course. for the time. Thank you. And uh, would it be possible if we bring friends of ours in the future who are in, of our of our group of our company. Yeah, who are uh, fluent in these languages. But of course, just make sure that you accompany them. Okay. Of course. Right, thank you. <clears throat> he leads you out. Uh, you guys exit the library just as Vax and Vex, after finding information about where to go, arrive. Hey. Do we also have the book? We do. We totally what have the, the book. Fuck? I know. I thought. You know. I think we all good. I don't know. What'd you find? Well, well, some uh, good stuff. It actually yeah. went quite well. Yeah. All right. We All right. found one book that we could read and one book that we couldn't. <laughs> okay. So we'll have to come back with okay. you guys because it was all written in abyssal and I know we can read that. Yes, because yeah. yeah. your father forced you to do things. Don't they Crazy. all? Yeah. Speaking of fathers forcing you to do things, <laughs> we're going to deal with you. Oh. Mm. We have a starting point for the Rakshasa. <gasps> okay. So. Soon, yes. when it's time, uh, step one will be the city of Dis. Yes. The city of Dis? Yes. This, this city. Not this well. city, but the city of Dis. Okay. Yeah. We built this city. Did you build this city? On rock and roll. Can I have that book, please? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi. Yes. This is, uh, yes. Yeah. That's. I'm just going to hold on to that. Are you going to hold on to do you yeah. have a? Do we have a bag to put that in? We have Grog's bag of holding. We save one wheel. Is that? Hey, is there somewhere we could buy a fucking bag of holding? I got yet? it. They're kind of rare. They're, they're not. They're <laughs> not expensive. To but, Grog, they're rare. But you can ask around and try and find somebody. It'll take a little time. You guys are right now hitting the cusp of dawn. I was hoping, for, hoping maybe for Sorry, a test of holding. Dusk. Dusk. Is there somewhere I could find before things close? Just to see. Uh, make an investigation check. Ah, <laughs> balls. That's terrible. What'd you roll? I rolled 13. You managed to find one location, but it's been closed for half an hour when you get there. Fuck! Sorry. Fuck, fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's in Los Angeles, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh, yeah. yeah. Um, Keyleth? Yeah? How about we, uh, we go see your dad? <laughs> are we are we tabling the book then? I mean, we're gonna drop it off. I think. We're yeah. Well, what did you guys find out? Is it is it a good good spot, good home for it? You want to uh, drop it off? They definitely or? are interested in it at the Platinum Sanctuary. Well, a little too interested. You think? From really? my taste, yes. I I don't want this book in anyone's hands. Frankly. They were very interested in researching it, which I don't think is a bad thing. They're good people, the and learning about history is a good way to keep yourself from repeating it. However, you do serve the Raven Queen, who I know wants nothing to do with the undead, and if it means destroying this book, then do what needs to be done. Can we destroy this book? Yeah, it's like our magical items, I mean, it's not easy to destroy them. Seems like a pretty powerful book. The fear I have with the book is, of course, if we keep it, we keep it out of the hands of everyone save those who are finally strong enough to best us. Do we want this book to travel to hell? Oh, no. 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 Well. But it might not be a bad. <laughs> I mean, we did drop off the horde of Orcus here. Maybe. I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you guys get everything set to go, and I will drop this off. What? Let's meet. Where? There. 
Where? Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You're gonna go back to the temple. Oh, that's a terrible idea. I kind of like it. That's not a good thing. I think it's kind of a good idea. That may not be a right. good thing. Do you want to come with me? Yes. I hook him by the arm and we just start off. Okay. Find a bar! Mm, I'll get things packed. <clears throat> it was my idea! Go oh, fuck yourself. Love you. Yes. <laughs> I look at Vex. Dresses? Oh, everything's fucking dresses. closed! Oh, God damn it, Pittsburgh! Are there dress, are there dress <laughs> shops open at all? While Make they're doing that? Check. This ain't the New York City? We right just here? want pretty dresses. In the morning. Oh, 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 oh! Get it, girl, get Draw, it, get it, girl. Dress 25. <laughs> you do manage to find one individual who's in the process of closing their uh, formal attire shop. <gasps> and you catch him. 20 gold and an extra 20 minutes, please. Well, but of course, come on in. <laughs> Thank of course. you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I guess you're giving a buffer. Everything's better. <laughs> All right. Keyleth. <clears throat> what? What's good for your Ashari people? Something covered in grass, maybe. I <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> like turf, like astroturf. <laughs> oh, that's you know, it's a little esoteric for me. Yeah. A little experimental. Okay. Yeah, a little Gaga-esque. Lots of pink bows, maybe, uh -huh. for me. Oh, you know, <laughs> I, you know, it just, it reminds me a little of when we dressed Trinket up in right, pink bows. Right, oh, and we could be, like, mm. oh. I don't know if that's a good thing. Help us, make us pretty. Make us pretty. And very expensive looking. I'm gonna become royalty, kind of, but not really. <laughs> it's my first time to get to dress up as royalty. Yes. All right, that, Okay, the uh, the the gentleman seems a bit overwhelmed, but quickly goes ahead and helps you guys find uh, over the next thirty or so minutes some very nice dresses, better than anything you've previously worn. And he gets you something that he thinks royalty should wear, as there is no real royalty in Vasselheim. It is a church-run state, um, and is a <laughs> collection. It is it is more of a frumpy robe um, with a fur collar. Um, this color is so this big. This is terrible. Give us something flowy. Why can't I see Flow, yes, over of course. It. I'm so sorry. Flow, <laughs> yes. Um, he's starting to get a little impatient, but does manage to pull one very nice, simple gown that just is a hangs off the shoulders and kind of pools in the ground around you. In all the colors. Can it be all the colors? Yeah. Like... Can we dip dye it blue? Dye? I. I I could have it dyed. That would be by tomorrow morning. I'd be prepared. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. I'll I'll get taken care of. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's happening. You two are heading to the Raven's Crest. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you guys walk over to the Dusk Meadow, um, met by the same gray, kind of slightly bleak atmosphere on this side of Vasselheim. But you make your way to the exterior of the large structure. The um, ominous obsidian and gold building that represents the center, the, if you will, the beating heart of the Raven, of Raven Queen's worship. As you approach the front stairway, both of you familiar with one kind of brought in, the other not met with any living person for the most part in your journey. Um, you both approach, still arms hooked? No. Okay. I suspect you've been here before. Yes. Um. I, uh. I like the things are better between you and I now. I. I feel the same. I. I like that most things are better now. Not everything, but. It's a brighter world, even for us. Do you know what I like? Uh, I like the version of you that my sister brings up. I do too. That's, uh, I'll do my best to keep him in the forefront. And as for you, I like the version of you that's not afraid, so let's 
go meet this terrible thing, drop off the book, get you feeling a bit better. <clears throat> Come on. Fuck. <clears throat> As you both ascend the stairs, uh, you see standing, previously not noticed as you guys were having a conversation, but off to the sides of each side of the entryway, uh, the two doors that are closed, there are two women in long black gowns, the kind of dark veils that drift over their head to the mid-torso that you had lead you into the chamber initially. Both suddenly present themselves, kind of bow and step out of the side as the chamber doors <laughs> open to the interior of the Ravencrest Temple. There, standing as the doors open, is uh, what looks to be an older woman uh, wearing the same attire, the same dark veil, somewhat uh, able to see her features beneath the dark material that hangs in front of her. She steps forward as the doors open. Hello there. You recognize me. Uh, this is my friend. Um, we bring you an offering for the queen. The woman kind of bends down, takes the tome from your hand. As she holds it, she takes her fingers and brushes the cloth away that currently obscures the tome, takes a look at it, kind of holds it a foot further away from her face and <laughs> throws the cloth over the front clasps it in her arms and brings it down towards her torso. And for the first time since this, you've heard the, her speak before, you have had, not this before, but this strange, eerie, kind of airy whisper comes out from this older woman as she bends forward, clutching this tome. We thank you, and we will be sure that this finds its final seal. She has begun to speak to me. Her desires are not clear entirely, but I am listening, and I intend to learn. Good. We have to go, but I mean to come back. Whenever you're ready. The vision of the gods is obscured beyond the divine gate. We are not just their tools, but their extensions. The creations that act as their fingers in this plane. The center of all other life and death. Be watchful, be vigilant. She bows and backs into the raven's crest once more as the doors <clears throat> close, the two other women now flaking out of the shadows and stepping before each door and seemingly just not paying attention to your presence. I was envious of you once. God. So sorry. Make no response as you guys turn and make your way down the stairs from the Raven's Crest. Just so you know, it is your duty to have some joy in the meantime. You do know that, right? You're no use to her and wreck. She needs a man. Have a fucking beer. Oh, and I slap him on the ass as we walk towards the pub. <laughs> Look over my shoulder at the temple as we walk. Come on, let's get drunk. As your head moves forward walking, you feel this kind of cold tingle just drift down the back of your neck and spine. And then it fades, and you keep walking. Carry in your chest there a brief, warm, secondary heartbeat representing the 
brief boon granted upon you by the Raven Queen. You catch up with the ladies at the bar. Hey! <laughs> I shove Keyleth at him. Fix that, good God. <laughs> Oh, get the lift. Are you broken again? No, oh, I need a drink. Have you had one already? Yes. I'm She's fine. had a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys also, you've you've found dresses that are to your liking. You've uh, <clears throat> the cost of them with materials would probably run about twenty gold a piece. I think that's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Designer. Mm-hmm. Couture. I can't believe these dresses are so much cheaper than a healing potion. I know. Ridiculous. It's like, look at the beading. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm. Wait, we're picking them up in the morning, Keyleth. You're not even wearing it yet. In the morning, <laughs> I'll look at the beading. <laughs> it's crazy. That's sweat, yes. Yeah. Uh, where are Grog and Terrian? Oh, I haven't heard from them in a long time. Grog, Terrian! Grog! Can we hear them? Uh, you were still in the quad roads, keeping low. You guys are both, you're, you're, well, you're able to hear them. Um, whatever you guys have been up to, trying to stay out yes. of sight. <clears throat> yes. We're at a bar, where are you? Funny, we are doing something similar. Are you done? <laughs> no, we're just starting. Uh, are, they, you... are they talking to you right now? Yeah, Is that no, Terry? Yeah. To tell them to... Tell them, tell them we say hello. Oh, look, I, the two fucking people are talking. Tell them, talk. tell them. Yep. Did you no, buy you potions? Out, I need you to talk are. to Terry. Just, yes. just tell them, tell them, tell Terry to tell take you where we are. Tell them where we are. Ask them where they are. Bring us time. to us, I'll give you direction. Tell It'll them. be fine. Tell My them. real world ADD is <laughs> fully maxed out. <laughs> I just heard a bunch of sea lions barking like. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! <clears throat> um, Why don't you two come join us? I reach over, I cover Terry's mouth. <laughs> Percy. Yes. Let me know when you're done. Are you sure we're drinking? You can join. All right. What 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 tavern are you in? All right. I'm going to send you the psychic information of where we are right now. You can do that. I, I want to say the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Vex uh, lets you know that this is the. Uh, uh, oh shit, what is it? Which tavern would this be here? Let me look through it. Can't even just bullshit. You have to actually look up the real name. No, there's two bars in Vasselheim. There's, there's, there's a lot of bars in Vasselheim. Yeah. Yeah. It's the other bar would actually be enough. The but. other bar. The Siren Suckle. We're in the Siren Suckle. Oh my god, I heard it. My Isn't that amazing? My powers are getting stronger. I've, I'm, I've gone beyond the veil. All right, we'll, we'll make such our power. way over Meet to us you. soon. Did you buy potions? Are you asking me to buy potions, Percy? No, I want you to come straight to the bar. Straight to the bar. But I thought you just sent me a request. I was thinking about something else. No, you just you just heard me thinking about something else. I will have to fine tune my abilities. You'll get there. All I right. have every faith. <laughs> You're doing really well at perfecting oh your mystical voice. God, I hear two voices yeah, it's now. It's good. It's good. I like it. <laughs> Freddy, order me uh, something that rich people drink. Beer. <laughs> I get him some it? wine. I get him Dumb beer. a giant glass of half Guinness, half whatever like what whatever cider they have, and just Ugh. place it. Rich people get drunk. Oh, do you want something fancy? Yeah. Okay, I take the I take the black and tan. <laughs> oh, black and tan. And I get him a tiny glass of creme de menthe. <laughs> this this one tells me that you have the goods, so I want the goods. I don't, I don't know how to feel a little awkward in saying I'm not sure I want to waste it on you, but. We're in a bar, you fucker. Buy me a drink, you asshole. I've saved your life like three times. I'll wait for her to nod. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> what do you I, mean by the goods? Oh dear, I pull up. I, I, I tip the barman because I'm showing him that I'm pulling something out for some, for, for some glassware. Okay. Because I'm not an asshole. Right. Well, and then <laughs> I pour a, la a little bit of the of the uh, tear whiskey of the of the green tear. So mm. it's mean. It's minty. You'll love it. Mm. We have it every year. Where did you keep that? <laughs> Where'd you just okay. pull that from? Do you actually want me to answer? 
You can say yes, it's all right. It's not going to get weird. That's all right. I'm going to tell you anyway. Oh, see see geez. this belt? It's got a series of these little of these little uh -huh. th these little things on. Those are mostly filled with like little bits of gunpowder I've got wrapped up in a thing. Right. Yeah, it's these right. last four are liquor. <gasps> that's so smart. That's how I can that's how I can just stand everyone when they're being idiots. It's wow. really trash. And probably much cheaper than just buying in bars yeah. all the time. Oh yeah, no, I'm well I, I like to I like no. to drink what we the, the local. Mm -hmm. the you have to take the pre gaming feat to actually what? use that ability. Oh. Uh, <laughs> at that point, <laughs> you watch as Grog's hands kind of hit the doorway, and he sheepishly looks in, checking the surroundings for any possible. Look. How busy, how busy is it in the tavern? It's actually pretty sparse, aside from your friends, maybe two okay. other individuals that are Come in, come inside, listen, guys. So, Terry oh. comes in and <laughs> behind, you watch hey. Dodie. Hey. Yeah, no, oh, I forgot Sorry. how weird Dodie looks. Just, just, just uh -huh. bring it down a notch. Oh. Listen, apparently, okay. um, Dotty had a bit of a run in with some of the Vasselheim. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? For those of you at home, this thing has been just driving us nuts all night. Everywhere. It's a sturge. We had a bit of a run in, and Dodie um, may or may not have uh, paddicated some of the guards. So, like, we How need to remove. Dodie killed, killed two guards. He just killed them. They're well, dead. There it is. They're dead. He killed yeah. two guards. Oh. We didn't oh. tell him oh. to. He just oh. did. But, did he really but, kill them? But did the disguise work? <laughs> I actually think it did. Oh, actually. <laughs> He's been doing this for about half, half an hour. Half full. So. He'll have a glass of something half full. Thank what? Uh, uh, what did you tell him? Are you sure Dodie? they were dead? What did you inform him of right before? Dodie before. is writing all this down. My boy. Intentionally murdered that Dodie. Do this is evidence, Dodie. Yet I might maybe. Oh. Look, Percy, uh, Vax. Dear diary. I think you need to remove. I have an itty bitty metal penis. <laughs> you need. <laughs> you need to remove Leave that Dottie's here. disguise. No. No, no. Oh, because they might recognize him as yeah, the murderer. They'll be looking for a Wait. giant red haired, eight foot tall. No. What we need to do is put another disguise on top of this one. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Doty, Doty, did you actually expire two soldiers? Hmm. As he's doing it, I pull out some lipstick and I start drawing lipstick on his face <laughs> to try to turn Doesn't it more resist. into a girl. Is there a, you ask is him there a is mop here. anywhere in the room? What? In this room? Uh, not within visual. No. You, you want me to ask Dodie or you want me to ask Terry? Ask him if he has them. Not in this tavern, no. This is not a fine establishment. Maybe he just punched them a couple times. Greg knows. Yeah. That's good, close enough. Did you kill them? With those punches of fury? Did you? I did. Are you sure? Did you check? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm really strong these days. Rock. <laughs> inside check. Rock. I'm joining in on this inside sure. check. I call bullshit. Sure. <gasps> <gasps> oh, that's a one. <laughs> but I'm not wasting luck on it. He fucking killed two people. <laughs> Thirteen. Jeez, man. It was like an act of mercy, did really. Did they attack you? Grab, no, make no. It, make a deception check. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Nineteen. Fuck. <laughs> Rock fucking killed two 20. people. Whoa, twenty. Why? Were you in danger? No, no. Why? What happens when Pike isn't around? Look, from what I understand, these guards were attracted to the horrific disguise that Dottie had. <gasps> he knocked them out, brought them in. I checked for like a pulse. Like check their knee reflexes, and they were like on death's door. So I just finished the okay. deal. It was really most. I'm feeling slightly better, but slightly worse. No. Did anyone see you do it? We're not sure. Dodie did this outside without us being there. Dodie, uh, did anyone see you do that to the guards? He won't answer you. Dodie, did anyone witness your crime? <laughs> <laughs> Terry, can this, uh, you, what do you mean you, you didn't tell him to? Uh, I told he him just to protect us. He, he's, a, he's my protector. He does what needs to be done to protect me. Terry, is this thing safe to be following us around? Yeah, no, it was really impressive, actually. Maybe I you shouldn't have bring him into respect. cities. Maybe that should just be a rule. Was there no other Dirty choice? doesn't come into cities. Well, I don't know. We would we'll let the bear come into bars. Well, yeah, Trinket is well behaved. Well, that's fair. Doty kills people. Well, well, to be fair, Greg killed the people. No. Doty merely roughed them up. And to be even more fair, they've been drinking all day. <laughs> <laughs> Smell like alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still buying this? No way, we buy that. The 
Bet your ass you do. That's a twenty. Yeah, that's a twenty. You can. You can go for me against Sunshine. What? Oh bullshit! That was the most bullshit. Never gonna ride her and throw it high again. Twenty-one. You are the first person to not believe Grog's story. Grog. Do we need? To make sure you're with an adult from here on out, can you not be trusted alone with Terry? Did you buy potions? I have quite a gift for you. For me? It looks for like a all of you. No, <laughs> no, do not, do not be influenced by his very generous act of kindness. That was so kind. Is there a I think bit you'll of find something for that everyone. Was, in that, that was like six thousand gold spatter. worth of. Well, it's, dried. it's dried by now. Is this Don't. blood on the? I mean, we're that, skipping no, that's vomit. The, oh, we're skipping that's good. past the fact that two men are dead right now. Do we need to go and find them? Do we and need to try go find to... these dead guys? And... No. Nope. Are you sure they're dead? I forgot where I left them. Krog. <laughs> I, could, I know where they are, but the situation was fluid and it was fast moving, and we acted on our best instincts and yeah. our best judgment mm -hmm. and. Mistakes were made. Terry, it sounds like all of the opposite of that is true. When Except you're an mistakes. adventurer. <laughs> the mistakes part, yeah. When you're an adventurer, you have to learn to live with a certain amount of blood shed around you. And I think what Greg has told me today, what he has taught me was to toughen me up. And I appreciate him for that, and I appreciate the lesson. And I appreciate you all for sending me out with him, knowing full well that that would happen. Don't kill people in cities. Is Don't this... kill people. I still haven't, I, okay. Don't kill people. Who Grog? killed anybody? Max? Did you? What? You didn't kill anyone, did you? Of course he did. He looked us in the eye and he said he killed two people. Yep. We should go find them. They did. I don't believe him. Can I roll an inside check? Sure. Odo. Oh, Who's from it? What's this? Oh no! <laughs> What'd you roll? I believe him. <laughs> What'd you roll? I believe him so good. Eleven. This game is not. Fair. Fucking killed two oh people. My God, bro. Look, I was That's trying it. to protect our new friend here. Where it had to be done. Where oh, was this place? We're never going to be able to come place? back to Vasselheim! We have a, to find these two men and bring them to a temple or something. We can't just leave it them. It was a potion cellar. It was a It was a medicinal her herbalist or something. Can you guide me there? Oh, you did not go to that guy. The guy, oh you no. That guy? He it did say he wanted to see the twins, especially. That is not. Look, listen, take me to this place. <laughs> you and I will carry these men to a temple. And do what? What they did to you? Well, what happened to me? Well, you were revived from death. Uh, uh, well, I can't do that, and you can't do that, so we need to take these men to oh the temple God, somebody look, can fine. help them. They're not dead. I don't believe you. No, I just not, I knocked the life out of them, but they're not dead, right? Wiretapping does not mean dead, all right? <laughs> it was in quotations. Yeah. Dead. Dead. Okay, look, they're fine. <laughs> they might be covered in beer. Inside we don't check. really need yeah, to go back for Yeah, I don't believe you. It. You killed now them. Now you're the fucking boy who cried wolf three go times. Go for it. Roll inside, both of you guys. God damn it. Don't fuck me, Gil. Oh, dead? I rolled Gil too. Oh, jeez. That wasn't great. No, wait. I got it. I got it. I got Natural you. 15. 20. No, I got Natural this. 20. They didn't ask you roll tells. I'm 24. You scare me. Yeah, no, you guys get this point. Grog's been fucking with you. You fucking dick. Yep. <laughs> no, seriously, he still attacked the guards, right? He yeah. Did. Like, that's still really bad. Terry! Yep. Whose vomit is this? So, those guys aren't dead, is what you're saying? The two guys are not dead. They're not, yeah, they're dead. not dead. All right, that's kind of funny. I didn't. <laughs> I still feel like I still feel like I, I would like an answer to the mystery of the vomit. He was crying. At least Georgie was in disguise. No one will recognize him. Just take the disguise off him now. That's sure. what I said like five minutes ago. Take the disguise off of him. I mean, that looks like Terry's vomit. How can you tell? Because I saw him puke under the water and it floated right <laughs> past me. I got a great view of it. Oh, what, what, what is better in He's this He's a town? nervous puker. A yep. disgusting mess or a robot? Is it the color a or the robot? texture that's really dirty? Uh, an ot automaton. Necromancy. A a Necromancy. Oh, God. An ottoman. Necromancy. Ottoman. Yes. Right? I think I need a drink. <gasps> oh, what? 
What? I pour him a little bit of the yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of the of the tear whiskey. How'd you guys do? Oh great. We thought we had a book. But you don't. We, we, we didn't. We yeah, we left without the book, thinking we had the book, and then we lied about not having the book, but we actually didn't have it. Hmm. But it seems like really it might good. be okay, right? Got that mother. Did you did you? Did you get it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I say real life hero. I say two guards alive. I say <laughs> that is fucking dead. <laughs> we get Doji's disguise off of him. Sure. All right. Uh, all right. I say we go to sleep. Stop peeling in the way. And then what? Put it then in we get up in the morning and we pick up our pretty dresses. Yeah. <laughs> and we go. And we go get you crowned <laughs> so we can wear our pretty dresses. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. <laughs> Everything but the hair comes off. The mask, the porcelain, everything else comes off. What about off. the cloak? Cloak does not come off. Ugh. No. Well, not not from just hugging it. It's it's yeah. adhered pretty strongly. This is it's fucking terrible. I'm so angry. Terry, <laughs> going forward, I think you need to recognize <laughs> how literal Dodie takes things, and maybe think, maybe more detailedly on how you. Word things, maybe? Doty did his job. He protected us. From who, innocent guards. Who were going to mm. arrest us. Why true. were they going to arrest you? Because we were arcanists walking loose in the... It's not illegal! I was led to believe that it was, and <laughs> I'm not... It's I'm not a stranger in this land, mm. and they were trailing us, yep. and... Your cohort over there, the big guy himself, told Great. me that they were a danger to us, and Philip. Doty did his job. Listen, you can't blame Doty for the mistakes that no. I may have made. I take full, full responsibility for this, and I, I throw my myself at your feet for mercy. I, I know I'm new to this team, and I hoped that this gift would be a peace, peacemaking gesture. By the way, you should divide all these potions up as you see fit. We terribly should. And <clears throat> I'm sorry if I made mistakes today, but we're all alive, we have what we need, and we're still on an adventure, right? A toast to mistakes. Let's all sing our fight songs, and shall we? And terrible consequences failure. <laughs> to failure. How about you go first, Terry? Yes, uh, let's, let's learn it yeah, from you. Stop. you. Yeah. Don't you show me what we wrote. <laughs> I just put it on there. <clears throat> That's good. Seven intrepid oh. warriors we were strong before and stronger with me. <laughs> Drinking wine and heroes' feasts. Saving maidens, defeating beasts. We fight, fight, fight with strength and girth. I slew a merit and proved my worth. Vix and Vox, Kiko and Greg, and Percival with a head like an egg. I defend, I defeated a Kraken too, and I saved the Ashari single handedly in the ocean blue. We fight, fight, fight with strength and girth. I won your hearts. And I proved my word. Oh! Yeah. 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 You all have fight songs too, don't you? Mm. We'll cover that at the next drink. I think it's time to turn in. I'm going to run. I'm going to get a little bit of the hardest alcohol that they have, preferably a clear alcohol, and ask them if they have any chicken, like or some sort of meat that they're about to throw away. They do have uh, some some Stop near it. near spoiling meat, and at, at the cost of one gold piece, you can get a pre sawed bottle. I pop it, and I'm I'm gonna try and liquor. I'm just gonna try and start solventing away the glue with grease, with fatty grease and alcohol. To remove. It'll take you the better part of the next couple hours, but you can do it. Yeah, I'm gonna just get this thing off. The, I may it. try and remove the hair too. You do manage to get the hair off. Um, you don't get all the glue splotches. Oh. Doty now has these like clusters of nasty-looking glue splotches all over the head that have like taken pieces of like thread and fuzz and Poor dirt God. and things just in the atmosphere to him. It looks awful. Doty looks awful. 
but the cloak does come off. We'll have it clean, dear. That's amazing. So good. <laughs> like, I can't believe you did that. Thank does you. the cloak of Elvenkind look like butt? Uh, uh, only like 10% butt. 10% butt. Yeah. Like, like there is still glue on it. You have to spend more time. Yeah. We, it looks like Can a kindergarten class attack yeah. uh, if you want to. Paste. Should we take off the mask? I'm yeah, with me. Fucker, there's <laughs> another one! <laughs> Like a Hydra. Stop. Travis killed one, two more like killed his face. Man, they go up, they go back Where did down. you go? Fuck. They're huge. Sorry. <laughs> that was really inappropate. So I'm as good. you guys get tired, you can rent a room for the evening. Mm. Here at yeah, the tavern if you'd like. The siren sucker. Room. Okay. So uh, oh. I'd say for the rooms for mm. all of you guys tonight, be drinking there. Mark off ten gold, it's fine. For everyone or each? For everyone. For everyone. Oh. I know. Yeah, great. I can take care of this if you'd like. No, we got this. We've we got, got this. It. It's fine, Terry. It's part part of being part of being in. You buy the potions. We pay for the shitty hotel rooms. Oh, well, I don't know if that evens out. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Don't think of it as a thing that evens out. Think of it as a is a ever increasing debt that uh, doesn't really ever get paid. I like the way you think, science bro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Already. As you guys rest for the evening, the morning comes round. You're across the board fairly hungover, but functional, except for Grog. Grog, you're fine. Yay, Constitution 20. <laughs> um, but you guys muster yourselves, get a quick bite to eat downstairs in the now even more empty tavern. Um, your dresses are at the ready. You go ahead and collect them. What's next? What do you guys want to do? We should go to see your people. I mean, we can catch brunch no, first. No, we should no. go to see your no. people. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's go. No time like the present. <clears throat> Wait, what, what are the colors of white stone again? Lavender, uh, white, blue, gold, silver. That's, That's the colors I want in my dress today. That's fine. Okay. It's too late, it's black. <laughs> You also, I might add, you do get to part of part of taking a crest is that you actually do get to build something of your own. We need to work on that. Personally. We do. I was, I was, I feel, I feel like I've, I've been negligent that I, we have not been, been. You also need to explain to me what the fucking gray hunt is at some point. Yes, we should get into that. <laughs> um. I, on, I only know because we've talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on, let's go, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Atlas upon Atlas. All right. And such, with the transport via plant spell cast into the nearest tree, you guys find yourself emerging from one of the cliffside trees that have grown out of the outcropping of stone and rock that marks the exterior of Zephra. Um, did you all travel here last time, or was it just Keyleth It was and just uh, uh, Vax. Yeah, and Vax. Alora, Alora, that's oh. whom we kind of forgot was with us. <laughs> that's right. And she was like, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, all right. So you guys all emerge, and you see now on on these uh, extremely tall mountain bluffs, the wind is strong on the outskirts, and you can see whizzing past you uh, puffs of cloud and leaf and dust. But it's all contained on the outside of this bluff, and before you, on the opposite side, built deep into this mountaintop, you can see dozens and dozens of structures made from uh, the natural stone and bending of longwood slats that seem to have been curved over into these dome-like structures. You see small trees emerging in places, and um, even though you are maybe a few hundred feet off, you can already see uh, maybe 20 or so of various uh, people just wandering the town, some of which are outside working on, uh, sitting on benches and working on various crafts. You can see uh, leathers being dried out from various hides. Um, you catch the sight of a griffin that just kind of <laughs> swoops past and disappears into a nearby cloud. And looking over the edge of the bluff, about 10 feet off, this is the drop goes down for hundreds of feet before vanishing into low-hanging clouds. You guys have no idea how high up you are, but it seems very high. Oh man. Are we falling? Is it super windy? <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, we're on You the can see a lot of wind rushing just around you, but it seems like this portion of the mountain is almost protected, or at least the winds are uh, guided in a way where they're not affecting this portion of the mountain. 
So what, what do we do? <laughs> what happens now, boss? Oh, I, I forgot, you guys haven't seen my hometown yet. Okay, all right, let's go that way. Okay. <laughs> See, over there is where I caught my first baby griffin. Oh, he was no. like lost and his mom, he got separated <laughs> from his mom and I kind of captured him up and I kind of tucked him up under my shirt. <laughs> and over there I actually I tripped and fell and that was the first time that I scraped my knee. And Amazing. like I was like, oh no, I'm bleeding. Yes, it must pain. have been terrible. Oh, it was so terrible. Yeah. Ow. Does it still hurt? No, it's fine. I feel good. I feel really good. Yeah? Yeah, I feel really good. I feel rested. I feel fucking healthy, man. I don't know. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as happy. Ah, <laughs> yeah, As you guys are walking closer to the uh, the outside of Zephra, you see as a couple of individuals begin to approach, kind of ch- three or four children rushing out and kind of just seeing these strange visitors in the outskirts, but also kind of like keeping low and you know not trying to. To draw your attention too strongly, though they're out in the middle of the open, you see a few bushes and uh, and elements here. You see two grown individuals walking up with the children, one of which appears to be a relatively young girl, maybe around 13, 14 years old, who kind of pushes the kids to the back and goes, Kiris? Yes, hi, hi. What's your name? Sora, he used, used to watch over me when I was little. My goodness, Sora! Wow, last time I saw you, you were like, like, oh man, look how big you've gotten. <laughs> uh, Do you still I'm, know that handshake? <laughs> Do you remember that? It, it takes a moment for you, you guys to and figure it you out. Got, it's you it's got slightly it. awkward, yeah. but for the most part, you recall it. <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm much older now. Oh, I don't need man. to. I didn't. I you're back. Um, yeah. I I guess I am. But, uh, we have to tell everyone else. <laughs> hey, hey! The kids are all just quietly staring, wide-eyed, and smiling quietly. Uh, Sora, Sora, have you uh, have you seen my dad around? Do you want me to get him? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Con, con, kids, and takes them by the hand, and they all drag the kids off as you guys wait on the outskirts of the city. One of the kids, kind of like who didn't quite get a hand in this young, kind of three-year-old boy who's running behind them, stops and just turns and stares at you all, but stares. Specifically at Grog, and just his wide eye going, Hey. Hi. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. You look like this. Okay. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, <laughs> just immediately bolts past to catch up with the rest of the crowd. So I believe you've just set up a lifetime of unreasonable expectation. <laughs> the Ellie, though. I've never seen Grog eat a single vegetable. No, fuck those things. I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Nothing in green is good. Uh, uh, a short time passes, a few moments before you begin to see the city suddenly come to more vibrant life. People are stepping out of their abodes. Uh, dozens of individuals are beginning to come together, talking and whispering, and some looking back and watching you all on the outskirts of Zephra until eventually it seems a procession of some kind is all gathering and moving out of this mass of people in your direction. As you look, you begin to see people adorned in similar clothing as to when you first encountered Keyleth in these swamps outside of Stilben. Um, you see these uh, you know, leather-based, almost scaled-looking armor that you know, drifts down to the legs. You see people that hold giant staffs that hold uh, golds and greens and blue colors that, res- that kind of mark the, the symbols of the Zephra tribe. Um, and then in the center of them, if you've met once before, you see stepping forth Corin, the father of Keyleth, and the current acting voice of the Tempest of the Zephra. His kind of long, white, silver hair drifting behind him, he approaches with a look Everyone kind of holds back as he steps forth from the crowd and kind of ignoring the rest of you, just goes and beelines straight to Keyleth. You can see him, he's, he has a bit of a, bit of a limp to him that you don't recall from last time, um, but he seems other than that in good health. And as he approaches you, he kind of clasps his hands out in front of him and takes a good long look at you as he reaches out and takes your hands into his own. He goes, my daughter. I just drop to a knee and say, Kai Tiake, Father. Kai Tiake, Keyleth. We've heard that the defense of Amon was successful, yes? 
Yes. We have defeated the Chroma Conclave. The help of Vox Machina and many, many others at the cost of many lives. Good, good. I'm glad we be of some aid to your journey. Yes, thank you. The Arashari were very valuable during that day, very courageous. And we will remember those we lost in that fray, the great sacrifices that they gave so that these children could live. So, and at this point, he now takes notice of the rest of the group. By what, what joy do we have of bringing your allies here and your returning to your people? He doesn't know. <laughs> Sorry, I thought um, <laughs> Yvonne might have said something. <laughs> um, I am, I'm here because I have completed my Aramente. I've yes, you have. Blessing. I just wanted to hear it from your lips. <laughs> Still waiting on your final word, I guess. Well, while we still have daylight, let us prepare for the ceremony. Come, come, all of you. You are welcome. Welcome here in Zephra. We'll begin. Decoration shall commence. Rest, prepare. Not but two or three hours until the ceremony is to occur. He turns and folks begin to rush in and he'll begin to just barrage you with questions and congratulations and a number of individuals who seem to have heard stories, many secondhand and exaggerations of the various things that you've accomplished over the past year or so here in Taldore. You answer questions, you play into the tall tales if you want. One child turns to you and goes, and who are you? Darian Darrington. I don't know who you are. You will. You. <laughs> um, there is a massive interest around uh, Grog, as Goliaths generally do not travel this far up into the territory of the mountain. Most of them stay far north in the Cliff Keep or wandering the Dividing Plain. And uh, they're just swarming you and like climbing up on you and hanging from your arms, and you feel kind of awkward, but kind of enjoying the attention at the same time. A really little. Yeah, kind of like gnomes. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> well, that works. Well done. <laughs> I'm good. Immediately, over the next hour or two, people begin to gather uh, floral wreaths and strips of silk and material that have been prepared specifically for these types of occasions. Many of them new, made from the recent generations in preparation, many that are held over by tradition and by the various leaders that came before you. Many that may have had the hope of the return of Ilya, but instead carry through with memory of Keyleth. As this transpires, you guys are brought food, you are gathered into a central open celebration uh, kind of almost like a, a, a pit that descends about two feet, and there are a number of stools and tables, and food and drink are brought about, um, as opposed to uh, an event and then a celebration afterward. It seems to be the reverse here at Zephra. It's a build-up. It's everyone, the excitement grows. Um, as this is happening, you glance off, and there is one very large, singular tree right across the way at the very edge of the precipice of this kind of rocky outcropping that holds most of the city of Zephra. And here at the edge you see one large, uh, twisting, gnarled tree that curves upward, not quite sun tree in height and size, but still very elegant and beautiful with long, thin branches that just gently sway on the outskirts of whatever barrier seems to bend and twist the winds from coming and scattering the village. Um, you watch as people step up to it and they're leaving Jewelry. They're putting large ribbons across it. it. Elements of it remind you of the tree that was in the center of the temple in Vesra, though a different texture. It seems to be a deep, vibrant, healthy, dark brown, and with elements of gray uh, bark, with moss that grow at the base and tuck under the branches where the shadows tend to linger throughout the day. Eventually, it seems that they've returned and the decor is set. Benches have been moved, and most 
of the people of Zephra are now shifting in the direction of this tree. In, in all the hubbub and the movement, a few moments before, I'm, I've been watching for Corin, and when I see him alone for a second, I make a beeline toward him. He's in the process of, of a conversation, and he, he's, it's interesting. Like, during this whole thing, he was excited to see you and you've come, but he's also, he's kept a strange distance from you during this preparation. He's, he smiles, and you guys meet eyes occasionally, but he's, he's also just focusing on this endeavor, and then you kind of come out of the blue. Ah, oh, yes, Vaxeldan. Forgive me. M might I have just a moment? Uh, quickly, we're, we're about to begin, but yes. I will be brief. I, I just wanted to take a moment to say, I really wish you could have seen some of the things she has done. I know you are proud of her. I've never met anyone like her. She's going to do your people very proud. I'm grateful. As are we all. You've a lot to do. Hmm. As do you. As does she. And he kind of reaches out and kind of pats you on the head and kind of ruffles your hair a little bit. And even that feels a little awkward for him, like he feels in impulsive to do it, and then kind of almost, oh, that wasn't very. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, it's more than I ever got. Wow. Oh. Ow, ow, oh, I'm free. Darkness. Anyway. Darkness. <laughs> Come. It's nearly time. And as all of you are led over, there are spaces at the very front of the ceremony, kind of in the semicircle around this tree, and there are platforms set up at the base of this tree now, um, amongst these hundreds of various dangling threads, these, these uh, small pieces of paper that flitter on the outskirts of the gentle wind that pushes through. Um, you guess they might contain wishes or passages or something, but if you see bits of script written on them amongst the various uh, glinting pieces of glass and gems and stone that have been polished. Um, it's small but beautiful. Um, eventually you're led to sit in the center of this front semicircle, and as everyone kind of gathers and takes their seat, you hear the occasional kid crying and people kind of muttering to themselves, and eventually everyone shushes as Corin, now wearing a very old ceremonial long, light blue and white robe, uh, wearing what looks to be some sort of a somewhat tattered, like a scarf almost, that's wrapped around his neck and then drapes off of each of his arms. It's thick and it's long and it almost touches the ground around him. But you can tell from the way he holds it and his arms kind of consistently rest at this uh, crooked position that it, it, it has some symbolism to this ceremony. As he steps up under the tree and turns around, everyone gets very quiet, and the wind seems to almost stop on the outside of this barrier, like the rushing, perpetual gust of air seems to almost hold its breath for this. He clears his throat, <clears throat> and as he looks up to everyone, you swear this tree begins to just slowly produce cherry blossoms as his words continue. For long, we of the winds have awaited the procession of our tradition. With the passing of our elder voice, Duala, it was my wife, Vilia, who was selected to take the Aramente. Beautiful and full of determination, she accepted her path. And while she could not return to us, the destiny she set is now seen as one of preparation. Her journey was not in vain, for it was her love that produced our daughter. It was her guidance in joy that taught our child compassion. It was her discipline 
and understanding that forged young Keyleth's spark of intuition and unlocked her adept connection with nature and the winds. We mourn the loss of Arvilia, but take pride that she lives on in the eyes of our own returned beloved woman of the winds. Here we bring together our collective voices to bless upon my daughter, the memory of Vilia, the champion of Gwasar, the mantle of our destiny. And as he puts his arms up from around you to each side, Keyleth, you watch as young alkalites begin to approach from each side, arms down, all seemingly carrying these various pieces of, of dark green leather-like material, and as they come together, they latch them into place and slowly build this mantle. Ring clear our voices to unite our breath and grant our strength to her guidance and wisdom as Keyleth takes the rightful and earned responsibility of leading our people into this next generation. At this point, the assembled mantle is placed into Corin's arms, and you now see this beautiful neck and shoulder piece that rests past to the elbows, but limp and without body in his hands. As he holds it there and the rest of the acolytes step back and find their place seated, he kind of lifts his arms up a bit and begins to just sing a singular note. And everyone around you in Zephra begins to join in in this singular note. Do you choose to join in as well? <laughs> as you do, the notes begin to separate and harmonize. Instinctually, it creates this symphony, this beautiful tangling of hundreds of voices from all across the spectrum. And what at first may seem to resemble a discordant hymn finds this perfect spread of every note you've ever heard musically merging as one. As he does this instinctually, Keyleth, without even thinking, you rise and begin to walk towards him. Like the spirits of generations before you are lifting you by your shoulders and elbows and bring you up before your father, you find the breath leave your lungs, you, the inside of your mouth is dry, and yeah. you're unable to, to understand what it is that's driving you, but before you know it, you're standing before your father, looking up into his eyes as all of these voices just swirl around you, this weird warmth. The nerves in your stomach still climb to the top and vibrate within your chest as your father places this mantle over your head and shoulders, and it comes to rest on you heavier than you expected, but it fits well. As he places this, the green fades to a golden brown and red and orange and yellow. And the green leaves almost drip back into a long, springing trail of a cloak behind you that seems to grow with each passing surge of these voices around her until it reaches the ground and curls behind. Eventually the cloak stops. The voices soften and come to silence as you look up once more into your father's face. Rise, my daughter, and become Keyleth, voice of the Tempest. He steps back and bows his head, steps off the platform, and you stand and turn, and it's just you there at the base of the tree, looking about at all of Zephyr before you, quiet, silent, and your friends before you at the front of the crowd. Think I'd make it here. Yeah. 
I couldn't have done any of this without not only the support of every person in Zephra and every person of the Ashari tribe, members of Amon, Taldore, Marquette, even Wildmount. In my journeys, I've learned being a leader is a global effort, one that takes the wisdom of many. Most importantly, I couldn't have done any of this without Fox Machina. And the pieces of them that have I've taken away and have desperately tried to emulate in each one of them over the years. Each one of them with qualities that I admire and strive to embrace. Grog with his strength and his unyielding loyalty. Vex with her self-confidence and utter fearlessness. Vax is one of the most compassionate people I think I've ever come across. And one of the most brave, even if it's maybe foolish. And Percival, with your intelligence and your sensibility. It's always there to be my balance. And Scanlan, with his charisma and his wit. Pike. As you glance just past the group, you can see just the faint flutter of golden light and energy, like wherever she is, a part of her is watching. Pike. Her generosity and her authenticity always drew to herself. And even Terry, Terry and Darrington, <gasps> whose blind faith in Vox Machina and perseverance trusted us, even though he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All of these things that I I learned and couldn't be a leader without. And Vox Machina makes up me. Zephra makes up me. The Ashari people. and all of Greater Exandria. I don't know if I'm the leader that you deserve, or a good leader, but I'm willing to dedicate the rest of my life doing whatever I can for all of us. As long as Vox Machina stands by my side. At this point, you watch as the light that remains of the eventually soon to come setting sun glints across the cheek of Keyleth, the bit of damp tear that has rolled down her cheek just detaches from the edge of her chin and hits the bottom of the stone, every cherry blossom in the tree releases what? and drifts past her from behind before being caught up in the wind just past her, causing this swirl of pinks and reds and whites behind her. Everyone around rises up and 
and they all begin to cheer and clap all together. You look around and watch the rest of these blossoms kind of slowly drift. You look and see your friends around you, and you look around and see your mother out of the corner of your eye, just the memory of her. You sense that if she could be here, she would have been. Your father steps up and takes your hands and just says, I'm so proud of you. And there is much to be done, I know. But I'm proud of you. He takes your hand and holds it up once more to the voice of the Tempest and the future of our people. Everyone cheers once more together. (laughs) Tempesta! And with that, you gain the Inspiring Leader feat. What? I get the what now? Inspiring Leader feat. The is the end of your Aramente. Oh shit, Voice of the Tempest! (laughs) Which is pretty fun. Uh, What that allows you to do is... You can never die. (laughs) No, you can totally die. Um, you can uh, spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up the resolve to fight. And when you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures, which can include yourself. Within 30 feet, they can hear and understand you. Each creature can gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. Oh, what? Well, you guys are out of luck with the charisma modifier shit, but what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they can only gain the temporary hit points from this until they finish a short or long rest. So every short rest, you can give everyone 17 temporary hit points. That's Killer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One so. extra little hit what? keep us alive. You have to make a speech every time. Yep. Yeah. Essentially, <laughs> you take 10 minutes to talk everybody up. Yep. So start practice. Just, just, we'll work on St. Christmas. Jeez, so <laughs> no. Uh, oh, and we'll leave it there for the evening. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh, that was really? gorgeous, man. Uh, that tree. was gorgeous. With the tree, uh, man. That was awesome. Complete your armente. Took up the mantle and uh, apparently going to the Iron City of Dis soon. That's going to be fun. <laughs> we built it. No, no more. No, no more. more. No, no more. more. No, no, no more. <laughs> I, I came up with great formal wear for you, too. I didn't say it. <laughs> we're going to get a shit. I, 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 go I figured you out. I figured you out. We'll see. All right. Grog has a very discerning taste. I was, I'm very proud. <laughs> I came up with an idea. Well, okay. I'm glad we went with the blue dress after that cape turned all the other colors of nature, and it's like you are If you'd been wearing pink, da. that would have gone very yes. clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Jeez. Uh, girl. <laughs> well done, guys. Thank you again, Loot Crate, for being our awesome sponsor. Hey, oh. Loot Crate. Thanks, Loot Crate. Thank Maddie, great job. Dude, yeah. You guys are always such an absolute pleasure. Thank you, for, thank you for playing in my weird makeup world. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been working on that speech, man? That was, oh, that was that nuts. Was oh, that was fun. I've been waiting for the to get to that moment. Oh Improv. Um, yeah, I'm glad you survived to get there. No, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I'm still was there. Gonna. Game three. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, and the next one. Yeah. All right, we'll be back next week um, mm-hmm. to see where the next leg of Vox Machina's adventure <laughs> takes them. Um, until then, have a wonderful night, a wonderful weekend, and is it Thursday yet? Ooh. Take care, guys. Yeah, Hello, I'm Lisa Loeb, and I'm here to talk with you about dinosaurs. You want to say? You want to? What do you mean you want to save dinosaurs? What is this? Ray of lightning, you bloodthirsty death monster! Ah! Never quite get used to that sound.
is Cable Talk Day. Just direct your Twitch to Geek and Sundry. All around the world we'll get people to play. And play and play and play and play. We're celebrating game designers and the players. Cards and dice and role-playing slayers. Teams or co-op, whatever your flavor. Scream and shout but respect your neighbors. So let's join forces all for one and one for all. If you love games, come on. We're international. Save the date on your smart technology. Okay. April 29th is Tabletop Day.